for May the 27th, 2016, we talk about Uncharted 4, Rocket League's push for cross-compatible multiplayer, and we ask you your opinions on game guides and hints. Welcome to Level 151. My name is Cole Ross. I'm Dennis Furia. I'm David Meismith. And I'm Ben Merkel. And you're listening to The Level. It's a podcast for people who love video games. I am so sorry about last week. I will personally take responsibility as I had a case of the garbage <laughs> guts. <laughs> How dare you ever get sick? You directly control them. <laughs> well, I probably shouldn't have been going around licking those doorknobs. <laughs> oh. mm, yeah, I shouldn't have eaten that room temperature ceviche. Huh. yeah i fucked up add more lemons next time <laughs> the citrus cooks the shellfish uh -huh. um so so yeah but we're here we're back um i've actually played a game this time that i'm not going to talk about on <laughs> watch out for fireballs Woo i know right gasp and shock <sighs> oh one big thing that we missed out on um last week we launched the wiki yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> Sugarbone made it on. I know, like there's a whole saga in like... grand fashion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh shit! I actually have an update for that. So uh, I guess it'll be up by the time this podcast drops. But um, I tracked down uh, one of Dennis's old uh, fan fictions, <laughs> and oh, uh, link yeah, uh, link to this thing. I also tracked down the highlight reel um, from when um, Dennis and I were. Uh, featured on espn oh shit yes Whoa. when you guys were on the cruise ship <laughs> yep <laughs> well As by when i mean featured i mean like uh you know a couple of shots of like us running with our you know names along the bottom and then like <laughs> a brief like blurb at the end but i mean it does have us like dramatically sprinting into the finish line and stuff so yeah <laughs> oh cut some uh chariots of fire over top of that bad boy yep <laughs> yep. So I actually I wanted to find um I I you know called up my parents, you know, and checked if if um if we could find a video of um oh us in drama. Oh yeah, like the uh, the place that that what was it hard candy or whatever that Oh, where set. I was where I was like just just yelling at you all the time. Yeah. yeah. That would be amazing. <laughs> I think I posted that picture too of me like uh, glaring down at you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah there's like there's a repository for all this stuff and i just it it's a thing we joked about a lot because we never expected anybody to do it um but then people did it and there's an article it's on there that's cool. like cole is unstuck in time or cole's childhood and i'm just <laughs> you know it just with, with 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 some measure of dread looking at just kind of the accumulation of the things i've revealed about myself <laughs> <laughs> you know oh, yeah. this um, is where it all comes home to roost i suppose yeah I mean, yeah so all that so i'd like to thank jolla prentice chase greenley jeremy greer allison baker sam bear michael gibb eric c eric placence uh noah DBSA, i think uh devin vinland brian wade alex darada newbie Braden cameron and nick glauber for contributing to that uh wonderful thing i i don't know like it's it's pretty great yeah that's really yeah yeah so great uh you know oh. Good. Also, I I would like to in in terms of like life uh, life achievements or whatever. Uh, I feel like the wiki is a pretty good one, but I think another good one uh, with the uh, sugar bone thing is we officially have fan art. <laughs> <laughs> pretty good. Yeah. So go check that out. That's wiki.duckfeed.tv. Um, I don't know. Super 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 grateful for that. Yeah. So otherwise, anybody have uh, have some banter for the beginning here? We could talk about Kenny Loggins some more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in the in the pre-roll, we were talking about uh, like being banished to the cyber zone, um, and then Ben asked uh, like who would write that song, you know, Danger Zone. I said Kenny Loggins, and that is that joke that you. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, guys. It was fantastic. <laughs> it was wonderful in the moment. Uh, in fact, I may just I may just cut that in there. What do you like better, the cyber zone or the danger zone? Now nah, they're both pretty good. Cyber danger is my favorite. 
I don't even know what to say right now. You got to teach your kids to watch out for cyber danger. I'm sure that's some kind of PSA. Like that's that, that's <laughs> been used. In fact, ooh, cyber cyberdanger.com. <laughs> um, it is uh, this? a internet security information blog. <sighs> well, good. Trying to think of uh, who would do cyber zone. It'd be like Kenny Loggins on. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's Kenny Loggins. <laughs> <laughs> Oh damn, that's good. Kenny Loggins is almost a title worthy, but I don't know if this is uh if this is material that makes it on the show. I, I doubt it. So, well, yeah, we have uh, we have been away, so let's uh let us uh let, let's get let's get to it. We've got all the usual segments here, the segs, uh, with uh, the brief, the multiplayer, and the grind, and we're gonna start with the brief, the brief, where we talk about things that are happening in the world of video games around us. Uh, let's see here. I want to um, start out. Uh, let's go with uh, David. What's yours? Sure. So um, it's been announced that uh, the uh, Xbox One version of um, Rocket League is going to soon be able to play uh, cross-platform. Um, it, the the update to uh, do so is actually coming in... Uh, Oh, today, which will be several days. Ah, shit. It will. Have, uh, I mean, it will have been out for 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 a couple of days by the time by hear by this. by the time you hear this. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So um, uh, the PlayStation version's been to play. Uh, you know, with PC players for a uh, couple months now, and now uh-huh. the Xbox players are going to be able to do so. However, the Xbox players and um, the PlayStation players are um. Yo, yo, uh, not going to be able to play, um, play, play with, uh, each, other. with each other. Yeah, it'll, like the like the Venn diagram will look like like a, like a water molecule. Right, right. Because you know Xbox thinks we should all come together, but not that close together. <laughs> not those but, filthy Sony people. <laughs> right, exactly. Also, the article describes this as RC cars meet soccer games. I. I, I, I resent that. I choose to believe that this is a game of actual full-size cars with rockets strapped <laughs> to their back. Do they ever um, provide anything for scale? I soccer don't ball. think so. A soccer ball. I mean, it could just be like a gigantic... You ever play big ball volleyball in, in gym class? Uh, it could be a situation like that. Yeah, I, I'm assuming that a future where uh, rocket-powered cars is a dominant form of entertainment is also a future where they can make giant soccer balls. <laughs> I could see the argument for it being RC cars if you think of the ball as Wheatley from Portal 2. Mm. <laughs> that has to be a mod at some point. It looks strikingly similar. <laughs> Yeah, well, this is cool. Uh, more people being able to play with each other, like just just deep in that pool, really. Competition's going up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It will be interesting to see if this, like, I don't know. Yeah, I think. Did we have this conversation last time? If this at all, like, deepens the possibility for this becoming like a um, oh pro gaming type game? I, I don't know. I mean, we 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 we've mentioned it in that same breath as like this is this is something that could potentially become that. I don't. Hmm. It'd be cool. Like I I like the idea of something goofy like this being successful in that realm, as opposed mm-hmm. to well, I guess I guess like League of Legends isn't very serious, but I don't know. Like something this whimsical seems uh um like 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 a like a net positive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel like it would be a more fun game to watch for uh programming as opposed to say like counter-strike or something yeah i i so i follow espn esports on twitter and if their like percent of headlines dedicated to a game is any indication then rocket league is already like a huge esport because they they post a lot of articles with like recaps of games and you know highlight reels so it it might be that it's big and, and we're just not plugged into it yeah that could be yeah, I mean, I'll be the first to admit I'm not really. Yeah, plugged in is a good word for that. Yeah, so I'll pay attention. I think another thing too, the cyber zone. If you watch like two pros play one another, I think it's kind of hard to pick up on like the technical aspects of it, where it's like you kind of take the aerial shots for granted unless you've played the game and realize how hard it is to do. It's that. like, oh, this looks easy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, like just it's... like NASCAR. 
to do like a Pele bicycle kick or something, probably, you know, like, oh, he makes it look easy. I mean, that's pro athletes, right? They make it look easy. I'm, yeah. I would never. Like a second grader could do that. <laughs> yeah. Like by accident, like, but not intentionally, maybe. Like if your second grader just throws a tantrum and then there happens to be a soccer ball headed toward him, like. You know, <laughs> I do feel like even if by, by accident they flip and freaking uh, bicycle kick a soccer ball, that's still pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you still, still talk about it. It might be a monkey. I'm sorry I had to break it to you. <laughs> it's human to me. Um, <laughs> yeah, my, my monkey baby. Um, huh. No, so I need to do a little bit of introspection because I, 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 I said, like, oh, like, a, like, you know, Rocket League, like a pro athlete. And then, like, immediately I, I felt the need to say, like, not actually, like, no, 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 like, to hedge and equivocate, like, like, like a skilled player. I, I, I think, think I'm entirely fine with that. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it, it is a, uh, I don't know. It it falls under the similar like the similar banner of uh like oh it's fun to watch people be good at stuff. Right. And also yeah, it's just yeah, yeah they're, they're they're pros. I don't know. And you just I, I would never call like a pro bowler a pro athlete. I guess no, neither <laughs> would I. Yeah. Hmm. Ouch. We're about to get so much <laughs> we 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 focus. can go into that, but this is going to be a repeat of like David explains his views on art. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we we we've had that conversation a lot too about like oh he's, what is esport? I I want to interject with bowling and disc golf are my two favorite sports because you do not have to be like crazy in shape to be awesome mm -hmm. and be a pro at them. Yeah, I mean, it's like, like darts or pool or something like that. Just like mm -hmm. they're fun games to play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, just like basketball is a fun game to play. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, no one no one is a basketball professional though. <laughs> I'll be totally honest, like, and not, I, I, honestly here, not, not saying this to be, um, like, down on basketball, I do not get basketball at all. Like, How do you feel about hoops and Rocket League? Can't it's, say. It's Rocket League basketball. <laughs> oh, fair enough. No, no, that's, it's, it's just, like, a sport, like, you know, you know, like, I, I'm not a big fan of football, but, like, I can't get it, you know, I can watch it and stuff like that, I, I, I yeah. do not, um, yeah, I don't get basketball. So that's weird. I'm I'm 100 percent the other way around. Like I will watch some basketball, but like football is very difficult to like NBA get, or I, college basketball. Not to I think, the sports cast. Oh, either. I think huh. the thing for me is I have trouble with like the uh, like I guess what I'd call like semi contact sports. Mm. So so like can, to, to distinguish so something that sits between say like football and tennis. Right, exactly. Yeah. Where where it's like you know you're allowed to make contact with them, but not too much. Yeah. And and I guess I also don't understand the thing of where like the the fact that like as far as I can tell, like intentional fouls are um are like an accepted part of basketball. Well, I mean, you could say the same thing about uh, like head hunting and football, or uh, like flopping and soccer, like any of that. Like it's you know well for, yeah it, it's, like, it's an unfortunate part of the game football if you get caught i mean there's pretty yeah. dramatic uh consequences yeah. or at least there's it, an, an entire the, an entire city turns on you and disgrace itself since yeah. <sighs> yeah i i know like, got i i just it not i'm not i'm not saying anything's wrong with this but i'm just saying <laughs> i don't get it yeah i don't know like for for, for me it's just a uh, i don't know the, 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 this isn't a sports cast <laughs> yeah and you know all, all told i'm not that invested in anything anyway so huh uh dennis what you got for us yeah i've got an update on the valkyria chronicles um their azure what's the second part of the name Azure's... azure revolution okay yeah uh, so this is the the new game. I guess they're doing a remaster of the original, uh, and then they're also doing this Azure Revolution, um, which is like the next step in the series. Uh, and they did a demo in Japan and got very, very strong feedback that they had strayed too far into action game um, territory. Huh. And I watched a bunch of videos of gameplay on this, and I, I completely agree with that feedback just from watching it. Um, the original Valkyria Chronicles... Um, that everyone kind of loves is very much a, a turn-based RPG where your movement is not necessarily dictated by a grid, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's like you, you for your turn, you get a chance to move around freely for a certain amount of time or to use a certain number of action points. Yeah. So, you know, if you, if you're an idiot and you run in a circle, you can waste your entire, you know, turn <laughs> that way. 
but it's it's not you know hey i can move three squares it's like hey i can move so many feet and you can spend that you know however you want um which resulted in a game that still kept that turn-based XCOM zeitgeist um but felt very unique and kind of of its own so that's that's what people know and love what they what they put out in this demo is very much like the shittiest third person shooter i have ever seen like a clunky third person shooter with even more clunky one-on-one combat sequences like it's it's just or hand-to-hand excuse me combat yeah. sequences so it, it just everything about it looks just painful and manufactured and um having nothing to do other than like artistically with the previous game Hmm. um so i'm not the only person to think this like i said a ton of people gave this feedback um and it sounds like they are actually going to be making significant changes to the game to make it more rpg like um which in this case means more like the original games um so they're they're going to up the number of members in your party basically in the in the demo you had a main character that was then followed around by two other characters that acted as kind of like npc support um almost like an XCOM the bureau uh game no actually it's probably no i played that hey <laughs> i was really disappointed for the, for the, that game <laughs> for the one person for, yeah for the one person who played XCOM the bureau the, this felt a lot like that I don't, yeah, anyway no, no. honey i don't know why i said that come back yeah. sorry I, I really don't know why i said that <laughs> it's true no one did play it and even i didn't finish it um so uh where was I going with that? So this seems bad that a game company is behind the audience, right? Because you would think that they shouldn't be responding. Like, they should come out with something that the audience would enjoy, right? And like, if they're being directed by like customer feedback, then that's probably a bad sign, right? Uh, I mean, yeah. I feel like it's better than the alternative, which is like game companies ignoring the audience, which is normally what we get. I, I I feel like it's it's two separate issues, which is okay. Make it like it was before, which eh, whatever. But like, oh, you guys took a risk and it just totally didn't pay off. It's yeah. Like, oh, so what I, okay. what I would say is the the problem is with the way they pitch the game. Well, no one. The, the main problem is that the gameplay looks horrible and clunky. So take that set it aside. Let's say it was a really tight action game. You pitch this as the next step in the Valkyria Chronicles series. And it's totally not that other than, like I said, artistically, it's got some similarities. I, I'm opposed. Like you can, you can make these, you can make these shifts. Like sure. they don't, they but don't they need to be high about that at all. If they had said, Hey, we are going to do an action game in the Valkyria Chronicles universe. Great. Do that. Um, and I, it, we might be kind of on the same path here. I just didn't articulate it. Yeah. Right. So if, if you, if you tell people you're going to do that, absolutely. You should yeah. be able to do that. And I think some great stuff can come out of that. Yeah. But what they did is say, Hey, this, this is the next step in the series. And then let people kind of find out on their own that it's this crappy action game instead yeah. of what they well, were expecting. Okay, take take away crappy if they found out that it's this action game. Yeah. Uh, the, a, a, in which case, I think the people who really liked Valkyria Chronicles mm-hmm. are not necessarily the crowd that cares anything about action games. Hmm. Could they like be? That, could they be made to care by like this? Like the the the, the team that made their their preferred you know hybrid turn based RPG. Yeah, you know, well, like, and that, that that that's where the part that the fact that it's crappy starts coming into play. Yeah, that 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 that's that that's the thing. So I think that you're 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 absolutely right. Communication is a big part of this because what it feels like, and like I'm going to I'm going to simplify what you're saying. If what, what it feels like is um, the the developer behind this is taking away the initial like the like the original version of this that people wanted. Like, oh, you're making this instead of this, and you're taking away. Um, you know, what, what, what I expected from it. Like, oh, now we're just never mm-hmm. going to get another game that's like this thing that I like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, at least the way they set it up. But so we'll, we'll see whether or not this reacting is a good thing. Ben, to your point, I feel like it should have been obvious that like, hey, people were so excited that you're coming out with, with this. Stay in the same vein or at least communicate if you're changing veins. And they just seem behind the eight ball on this. So I don't I don't know how much they can scramble to fix this um, without kind of completely going back to the drawing board because the game that I saw in the demo and the core of the the you know Valkyria games that exist are very very different mm. 
And so them coming out and saying like, Hey, we're going to change the number of people in your party and we're going to change the way this works. Like I, it's like someone saying, Hey, I'm going to turn call of duty into a, a turn-based game. I, I don't know if it's going to work that way. So what you could wind up with is a game that was going to be a moderate pile of trash <laughs> and in trying to make it better, they're going to turn it into a huge pile of trash. So, so like Duke Nukem forever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now let's wait 12 years and see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it, at least at least they respond. At least they're not doing like the the um, oh from software poise thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, like that. It just we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll say it till I'm blue in the face. It is a good thing that games can be changed. Yeah, you know. And yeah. you know, it's important to hear feedback, and and that's great. I think if the feedback is so bad that it's causing you to do a genre shift your problem started way before you started getting feedback. Yeah. That's weird. If it's, if it's in, if it's in a beta or it's at the demo stage, like a lot of the work has to be done. Like, yeah, Yeah. there's, there's entire systems that have been built that are going to become completely irrelevant. If you don't, if you make this thing, not an action game anymore. Yeah. Although I suppose like probably, probably our assets and like animation and stuff like that could probably be kept. Yeah. Yeah, And like plot. From that perspective, it looks like a Valkyria app. Valkyria game like it yeah. is very much in the same art art style as the so other that, ones like that really lush like painterly like watercolor anime style yeah water, watercolor anime is a great way to describe it um but that's that's about all that's going to be left if they try to make this transition yeah See, um, all i remember from the previous game is like one one level where you're like behind enemy lines and if you don't take the exact right path through the level you get like hit by artillery Oh yeah, it decides you're a stealth game for a mission, yeah. and that's just the worst experience. So, as it is in so every basically, game what I'm saying is they have experience with suddenly changing genre. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Um, hmm. So you know, I, I'm fond of this series. I hope it will turn out all right in the end. Um, it seems like it, they've started off on a really, really bad foot. No. Hmm. Um, I'm going to do mine real quick here just because mm-hmm. it is, uh, kind of short, uh, which is, uh, so Disney, um, by discontinuing the Disney infinity games, um, that was their kind of like Skylanders amiibo kind of thing. Let's sell you toys. They can put on a dingus to make a game out of them. Um, with, with that, like Disney itself is no longer making any kind of games. The problem is oh, wow. that Disney, um, still owns itself a lot of IP that it's just not doing anything with. Mm-hmm. So, um, the, the, the like star Wars, well, like they're, 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 <laughs> they're shopping. So they're shopping all of that out, um, like the console stuff to, uh, to EA, to electronic arts. Um, and, uh, they still have like a mobile games division, I think at least somewhat internal, uh, to Disney that is doing like the, the star Wars heroes or whatever. I was just making a joke because there's a Star Wars movie coming out every year for like the next decade. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, they're they're, just, they're they're on that Marvel tip, which is makes sense because it's the same company. Um, what, what brought this to my attention because I saw like, oh, Disney Infinity gone down the tubes. That kind of makes sense. It doesn't make you know, it, like it seems irrelevant, especially compared to something kind of what seems cooler to me, like like a universe or whatever. Um, but um, but no, like uh, Ron Gilbert tweeted at Disney, which I guess this is how you start IP uh, uh, kind of negotiations is over Twitter now saying, hey, uh, <laughs> since you're not making games, can I have like Monkey Island and Maniac Mansion back, please, please? <laughs> so so Ron Gilbert, uh, formerly of LucasArts way back when, uh, one of the uh, kind of chief engineers of the uh, of the graphical uh, adventure game, uh, wants his babies to come home. And so, yeah, that's uh, that's that that's the deal. Um, this is also the case for uh, for Warren Spector uh, uh, asking for some IP that he uh, that, that he created uh, kind of under Disney. Warren Spector, he uh, he worked on Epic Disney, but he was working on other stuff. So basically, like <laughs> Disney's console game effort is this sinking Hulk that has all of hmm. this delicious, delicious IP jelly inside of it, including the actual Hulk. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-huh. So I wonder if there's if there's any chance that like good Disney giving up IP is not going to happen. I mean, uh we have Mickey Mouse laws for a reason. Yeah. Um that still but, makes me angry if I think about it. Yeah, 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 it really does me too. But um but 
I, it'd be interesting to see if they might have the presence of mind to be uh, to maybe like recruit some of these people, see if you know, tr- or like farm out the IP or something. Oh yeah, just like hey, we we won't sell it to you, but if you want to make a game with it, you know, let's let, let, let's talk about it. I don't know, like the 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 whole world of IP just feels feels. Uh, uh, let me let me look up what this word means. Icky. <laughs> well, there we go. That's a that, that that's a that's a pretty good yeah pretty good word for it. Um, yeah, it, it's one of those. It feels acrimonious. There we go. I, I didn't want to use that word incorrectly, and I thought I would derail the podcast when I say it. Like, you look at something like between like Sony and Marvel, and like, okay, you can't call them mutants, but we'll give you Spider Man. Um, you look at Fox, like, no, we're going to hold on to the Fantastic Four, um, stuff like that. I like, feel like that's actually for the best. <laughs> The Fantastic Four is great. They just haven't made a good movie, and all the bad I, movies have I been. I don't think they could. <laughs> I don't know, but like just a like I don't know. It's a it, it, it's all this like weird, ugly stuff, and so it could either just be like corporate inertia that keeps these things from going back to not just like where they belong, because like whatever, give me my babies, just, you know, just whatever. But like to people who will do anything with them. Yeah, you know? I I feel like some of it. And granted, obviously, I'm not an expert on, like, uh, intellectual property, but it seems like some of the idiocy is just uh, the the law, the the fact that you legally have to defend intellectual property um, in order to keep it seems like it causes at least some of the stupidity. Mm. Maybe yeah. uh, like, like, this, this, this seems like a different thing than like a than like a fan project, though. Like this isn't work that's already underway. This is like the, the, this is somebody like asking nicely, like saying, "Oh, well, this is a chance. Like you're you have no interest in making money off of this now. So, sure, can I have a back? So we, I, I I don't know if this ma- this you know exists, but if there was a way to kind of like loan out IP and be like, <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll let you infringe and do your thing. See, We're gonna hang see, on. See, that's to it, the but- thing. Like you you can't let people infringe. And I'm not. I don't know. Could you? you could you simply IP. enter into a contract effectively for free? There are revenue splits and things like that. Uh, like Kindle Worlds is uh, is one of those things where uh, where certain like television shows and you know uh, like book series series kind of things say, all right, there are people who are who are writing fan fiction. There are huge audiences for them. We don't want them making money off of this without without us, you know, kind of getting their beak wet. So right. we're going to go to Amazon and say, hey, people can sell their, you know, thousand page fan fiction opuses about Supernatural or whatever, or the you know, Vampire Diaries, I think is the more accurate example. But we're going <laughs> to take like a like a 50 50 cut after Amazon gets their 30, you know, like that is like like, like that is a way. But like that isn't I don't know, like that the, <laughs> seems like there's not very much dignity in that, especially for the person who created the IP. Yeah. Yeah, by the so way, we'll no, it, uh, it is definitely uh, Supernaturals is um, uh, fan fiction is alive and well. Yeah, <laughs> Supernaturals look up, uh, is look so up, bad. Uh, look up uh, <laughs> Wincest sometime if you just <laughs> want to be kind of whatever. I really don't want to. Like, I, I don't like thinking about that because my little sister is crazy into Supernatural. And like, yeah, so she... Supernatural's fan fiction is so bad that they reference it in Supernatural. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Like, yeah, they they like do a bit about it. <laughs> there's there's an entire there's an entire character who is a quote unquote prophet that his the way his prophecies manifest is that he writes a, a fiction series about the two main characters, and so he's like you know he writes the books before whatever happens happens. Dennis, how do you know this? Oh man, I've watched like six seasons of Supernatural. Okay. Oh yeah, it's a yeah, great show. Worry, like I'm not gonna. Oh well. So, since you were sixteen, you said. I said no. I said there's like 16 seasons, oh, okay. so I, I don't. I think yeah. they've gone on way, way farther off the rails than they. <laughs> they were pretty far off the rails when I was still watching. Yeah, yeah. That's that just... that that is my problem with it. It's like that. That's I don't know. Huh. yeah. Whatever. Yeah. No, I guess my my only frame of, re- of reference for Supernatural is my little sister and uh, man, yeah, just just a bunch of other stuff like that. I'm How just, old is she? She's uh 17. Oh, okay. I was gonna say. Yeah. It's a it's a scary ass show for a younger kid, but seventeen is about right. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's perfect supernatural age. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. 
Um, I have one. I have one more thing. This isn't like a paid endorsement or anything. I'm like we, you know, everybody knows we're friends with them. But uh, if you go on to uh, Steam Greenlight, go to Steam and then the uh, the community tab, uh, and then on Greenlight and do do a search for West of Loathing. Our uh, our, our friends who do uh, Kingdom of Loathing, their oh. uh, their turn based RPG, um, like a like a Western sequel to KOL, is uh, is is on Greenlight and they're doing really well. But I want them to do better. Uh, uh-huh. So go there and vote for them so this thing exists. That's awesome. It exists. Yeah, it's already like winning awards and shit, like at, at shows. <laughs> but you know, I want it to be on Steam. I want as many people to get it as possible. So, um, and Ben, you have two stories about Uncharted, don't you? Yeah, it's basically just two small stories. There, it seemed like a dry couple of weeks in the news cycle, but uh, yeah, it was just basically two stories about the development of Uncharted Four. Um, the only one that I want to mention is that they kind of went to semi-significant lengths to uh make sure that it was an inclusive experience for anybody who might have uh, motor skill difficulties um, or color blindness. Yeah. Um, and so the one example that they talked about was uh, a fan was playing Uncharted 2 and there was a portion at the end of the game that they couldn't get past because it required you to do a button jamming uh, cutscene. Yeah. And he did not have like the ability to press the controller that much. So they started adding features in the latest Uncharted where you could do things like just hold a button for a quick time event. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the other examples they gave is uh, there's lock on aiming. If you have a harder time uh, doing stuff with the two joysticks at once. So yeah. Um, yeah. So that just seemed like a, a cool idea that they put that in there. And I think one last example is uh, on their multiplayer, they changed the team colors so that they're distinguishable. So it's red and blue instead of red and green oh, great. for anybody who's red, green colorblind. Yeah. So, yeah. I feel like what did it used to be red and green? Apparently so. I I feel like I I know I I, I feel like that one should have been obvious. <laughs> like, yeah, red versus blue is a thing because <laughs> it's red versus blue. Yeah. Um... I I'll, I'll be honest. I would turn on that just hold the button thing in a heartbeat. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, <laughs> I I feel like the the real answer was maybe you shouldn't have quick time events. <laughs> Stop it. Yeah. Oh man, I'm just rem- remembering uh, Perfect Dark Zero, which thought it was doing you a favor. So they were <laughs> the the colors were red and green, which mark against you anyway. Um, but uh, they said like, oh well, well what, what, what we're going to do to like reduce confusion is your team is always green and the other team is always red. So from which your I, perspective, I like I like games that do that approach with like <laughs> but... your, your your team is always always like you know, always looks one way and the bad guys always look the other way. But, but, but even still, like, that's like, okay, well, that that doesn't help 10% of the male population. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Yeah. Um, so what I thought was remarkable about, the, remarkable about this, I saw this, but I figured somebody was going to bring it because Uncharted is is, is white hot right now, um, is that uh, when I fired Uncharted 4 up, I was amazed to see the accessibility options like front and center. Oh, really? Like when you start a new game, it's like, okay, well, here's here's audio, here's video. And then like, oh, like down beneath that, like beneath like, oh, do you want to uh, invert the Y axis or what or whatever is this? Uh, <laughs> Are you <laughs> a you're monster? A filthy... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, at, d- d- different strokes. It's a third person game like that. that that's a that's a thing for people um, was like accessibility and like to see this not be buried in like mm-hmm. five levels of UI is great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. At the risk of uh, moralizing here, uh, as many people should do as many things for accessibility as possible, because if you don't need it now, you may one day need it. Sure. <laughs> you know. Yeah. That's not moralizing. That's like practicalizing. Yeah. <laughs> Just like it's good. Like, I understand there's extra cost. Yeah. Pragmatizing. There we go. Um <laughs> <laughs> but uh no it's it's just one of those things like oh like yes there is a development cost yes there are considerations yes you have to think about it and innovate and all that kind of thing but like it's it's uh it it, it feels worth it to me as somebody who is not like in the industry or whatever like it's it's always cool to see what people do that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. awesome multiplayer now it is time for the multiplayer section where we ask you a question and uh uh plenty of you are kind enough to answer it dennis what is the question that you asked the nice people? Uh, the question is about walkthroughs and hint systems. Specifically, how do you decide when to start using one, and kind of how do you feel about them in general? Yeah, this is a this is a hot topic. We got a lot of a lot of very lengthy answers, so if we don't get through too many of them, I'm sorry. 
it's all your faults. Um, <laughs> I'm going to pick up with uh, with Roop, who says, With point-and-click games, I avoid using either one. The hint systems in those games us- are usually too straightforward or more confusing. Uh, I usually give a week for myself to find the solution, and after that, I try to find the most spoiler-free walkthrough. With older games that have, uh, that have time limits, etc., I tend to play with the walkthrough easily available for when I get stuck. Yeah. I hate it. I just, oh gosh, if you try and play like a, like an old, like text adventure or like a mm-hmm. really, really old graphical adventure, uh, with, uh, with a walkthrough, most of those walkthroughs are literally just, uh, lists of instructions, <laughs> which they almost have to be with how convoluted some of the stuff is though. I suppose. Yeah. But and it's I f- like, I just, I kind of want to figure out how to, how to disconfuck all the, the, the combubulator. And so- <laughs> I'd love to see that for like colossal cave adventures. Up, up. <laughs> down well, south i'm positive it, it exists like you know, but it's like you know just like if, if you're looking for okay how do i solve this particular problem well I, i'm sure that like how you do that is is answered here within these i don't want to i don't want to swoop anybody uh but uh but you don't want to spoiler anything <laughs> <laughs> david what does steven say steve says Anymore, I'll only use a walkthrough if i want to find all of the shiny bits like i'm doing in uh uncharted right now but I used to use them with Reckless Abandon as a kid, which in my mind robbed me of some of the experience. I know the dog jumps through the window in Resident Evil, not because I was surprised by it with terror, but because I read that it would happen before opening that door. Yeah. Ooh. I, I wish I could highlight that 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 uh, uh, sad smiley face there and then just like blow it up to 10x. Although I am really happy that, uh, that in... Um, Eternal Darkness, someone uh, warned me to, like, you know, gird ye loins before walking to the uh, bathtub. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I love that bathtub scene. (laughs) Um, Ben, what does Amanda say? Amanda says, hint systems within a game that wait a certain amount of time while you are working on a puzzle tend to be a cool design choice. As for walkthroughs, I have been known to use them when I get stuck because I have a limited amount of time to play video games, and I don't want to spend my limited game time getting frustrated. Probably doesn't play Dark Souls. <laughs> uh, that being said, I try to hold off as much as possible and only use them when necessary. The website before I play is great as well. However, old school Prima walkthroughs are why I knew things like what happens in Eris before I got to that point in Final Fantasy VII yeah. uh, because I read ahead. What happens in Eris is a sword. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> Twenty Too years soon. <laughs> I, I have to say, say Ben. Um, I almost tried to uh, figure out how to download the spoiler add-on to the wiki just so I could spoiler tag your entire profile. <laughs> <laughs> I like. Yes, he approves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, before I play is great. Um, like check stuff out. Like sometimes when I'm d- even just like try like thinking about a game I used to play, I'll just go and like read that article and be like, oh yeah, yeah, that is a thing about that. But mm-hmm. uh, you know, I do weird things in bed when I can't sleep. Especially with games that have like character creation choices and statting early on. Um, do you think it tends to shoehorn players? Like, how much is it? You know, they only talk about, hey, make sure you pick X, Y, Z stat when it will absolutely screw you if you don't versus like min maxing and optimizing your character. Because there's there's a lot of fun that can be had playing with like a non optimal character. That's just, you know, you, you chose because you didn't know any better, but it gives you abilities or gives you an experience that's slightly different. It. uh OK, so it, uh, it obviously changes depending on the game. Um, Mm -hmm. I think that like when it is giving you advice about a stat, like you can kind of read because this is a a lot of it's actually compiled from a, uh, a something awful thread. That's like, Hey, what should I know before I play X? Um, Mm -hmm. and you can kind of read their voice into it. And it's like, Oh shit, man. Constitution's a dumb stat. And it's like, well, no, I'll like, I'll look at this stuff and, and, and figure, I think that more information about that kind of like basic systems level stuff helps you make more informed decisions about the non-optimal things you might end up doing. Yeah, I feel like it depends on, uh, yeah, it depends on the game, you know, how important um, some of that stuff is, too. Yeah. Like, you know, if I'm going to play Planscape Torment, I want to know that Wisdom is the, the, the like, the key stat. Because if I walk into this saying, hey, this is like Baldur's Gate, but in Planescape, and I stat for strength, like, I'm not going to experience that game in, in the right way. Huh. I have been pretty 
sorry, this is kind of going off the rails, but I, I've been pretty impressed by the fact that, like, almost any thread I've seen for Dark Souls has been what build should I do. People recommend, like, quality builds so that, you know, your first playthrough, you can just do whatever you want. Yeah. I'm like, that's a lot more mature than I would expect from, like, most responses <laughs> to, you know, you know, you know yeah. like, most game responses to that sort of question end up as, like, you know... You're an idiot you know, if you oh, do anything but why. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, I mean, like, it is the, the, the advice that I would give anybody starting Dark Souls is, like, yeah, like, see a weapon that you want, like, stat for that. Go nuts, right. kid. <laughs> like, and if anything else fails, you you never lose by putting uh, by putting uh, stats into HP or endurance. I'm like, okay, any weapon you want, as long as that weapon is not a ladle. <laughs> <laughs> in that case, are, are you Lobos or not? Wait, wait, <laughs> are, are are we making a reference to um, Salt and Sanctuary or no Dark Souls <laughs> seasoning? Yeah, uh, no Dark Souls Two. Uh, one of the joke weapons is a ladle that one of the the um, elderly fire keepers at the beginning gives you. Um, okay, yeah. Because I was going to say, like, I think a ladle is a fairly legit weapon in Salt and Sanctuary. <laughs> that has to be an in joke on their part. Yeah, I think probably. Yeah. Oh man, uh, let's see. Dennis, how about, how about you? What, you what, what do we got next? Uh, Ollie says, hint systems in-game I find annoying as they really out-immersion immersion and are usually pretty silly. Uh, but I must admit, I've used walkthroughs to try and complete quests in certain games. Sigmai or anyone? <laughs> uh, they can be super helpful when you get stuck. stuck. I have a friend who only uses walkthroughs, so for Fallout 3, he'll follow a set quest line. He says he does it to maximize his play while minimizing his time spent. Uh, he's got six kids, so limited time. No hmm. kidding. Yeah. yeah I, see, see I, I almost, well, when I've used walkthroughs, it's been for completion. And that makes me go so super slow through a game. Um, and, and so it, if I could see like him choosing, okay, just what choices should I make? What direction should I head without needing to hit every single thing? I guess that could speed you up. See, I wish for, like, Fallout, I wish I could just get a guide of, like, which of these items, you know, seemingly useless junk is going to be needed for some quest down the line. Glue. <laughs> adhesive. Yeah. Lots and lots of adhesive. Or if you're playing uh, New Vegas, lots and lots of vault suits. Yeah. As you, as you should. Those vault suits are great. Especially the ones that give you, the pl uh, give you plus speech. Mm hmm. Huh. Let's see here. Um, Michael writes, I don't uh, mind hints and facts. Usually I think that support community and uh, seeking answers is part of the fun. Um, like the soapstone messages from Dark Souls. Um, I lean heavily on them for puzzles because I'm not a big fan of riddles in my games. Uh, the one exception that really rankles me is when a game tones things down based on my failures without, without asking. That infuriates me. Now, technically, isn't that Dark Souls 2? No. Like, if you if you go through an area enough times without completing it, you can you can kill an enemy enemy only a finite number of times, and then it stops spawning, right? That is. Oh, see, old... I thought that was the other way around. I thought that was <laughs> meant to make the game more difficult. <laughs> um. Yeah. So so that's only Dark Souls 2. Um. That could be argued as making it easier for you. However, that is uh, similarly a uh, an anti grinding, um, ah, I see. consideration as well. Um, so there are people who view it as both a blessing um, and also a curse. Fair enough. Sorry to use that cliche. That's kind of shitty. Um, but yeah, like that is a, it, it could go either way there. Yeah. The trick for that, honestly, um, like the, the whole, oh, it's, it's, uh, it's enabling suck mode, right. Is, mm -hmm. uh, is to do it uh, invisibly, right. Like I think that, uh, what is it? Uh, Resident Evil 4 does a really good job with that, which is like, oh, you're, you're running low on ammo here. Have some more ammo. Yeah, uh, <laughs> mm. yeah. I feel like yeah, you know, because I on the other hand, I can see what Mike was saying, where like if it does invisibly and you don't want it, that could be annoying. Hmm. Although it seems like maybe kind of kind of to you, what you said, it's maybe a little bit less. It, uh, I don't know. It seems like it's more tolerable if it's the game just like facilitating things, like with the ammo or like the way uh, Left 4 Dead does it, as opposed to the game actually making things easier. Yeah, it, it should also be on a game by game basis too, right? If it's an adventure game, it you know it the point of it might not be you know like beating a difficult boss, you know. 
Yeah. Yeah. Or like uh, to, to, to flip that around, if it's the witness, like what if, you know, <laughs> when you when you came back to a puzzle, there was like a marking on it that gave you a hint or something like that. So they do have hints in that game, but it's how to move and what the controls are at the very beginning. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Hmm. Um, David, what does Brandon say? Sure. Um, Brandon says, uh, for me, it depends on the game. Dark Souls, I generally have a wiki open for consultation when I'm curious about something, definitely. Uh, games with platforming or environmental puzzles like Uncharted, I usually just look up the solution if it is immediately apparent. Hmm. Yeah. Uncharted is a weird one, um, actually. like I can't imagine what a walkthrough for Uncharted would look like. So they'll... Shoot all the dudes. Shoot them well. <laughs> I think, so like all Naughty Dog games will throw up like flashes if there's like a puzzle or something that you're working on and you've been stuck on it too long, it'll pop up something and it'll say like, go over here or do this Yeah, as like a hint system. Yeah. I ran into that today and Uncharted 4 was like, oh, like I was, I was obviously going kind of like the wrong way or I was stuck trying to climb something I couldn't climb. And they're like, hey, press this button to get a little like waypoint showing you where to yeah. go next. And yeah, that, although... that was pretty cool. I hate it when they remind me more than once. No, yeah. Or like if or or like if they have an NPC being like, you know, the whole like, what are you doing? We've gotta <laughs> hurry. It's like, no, I'm looking for collectibles. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if this is a prison break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh oh also like when you're doing the kind of rare puzzles in uncharted actually like nathan drake will talk to himself like oh yeah. so and so and that feels like in character that that, that feels like such an exception and it mm -hmm. like it's a hint system but it's like diegetic mm -hmm. i know the yeah. the thing whenever whenever i end up looking up one of these uh ones in like a physics puzzle or an environmental puzzle Seems like half the time it's something I thought I tried already, but I didn't have like, you know, I, I threw the soccer ball just slightly wrong so that I didn't make the, you know, doohickey physics right. Yeah. Wait, you looked up a cheat guide to Rocket League? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I had to do that with uh, with Sherlock Holmes The Awakened. That was the first uh, of those kind of games that used, uh, I think it was like the Source Engine, but they used uh, like like physics with it. Um, in order to do that and just kind of like, oh, physics based puzzles um, don't work when the physics glitch, which is what happened. Right. Yeah. <laughs> is that the one with like uh, the, the creepy, uh, creepy Watson? I think, yes. It, d it definitely had creepy Watson. I don't know if it was the first one with creepy Watson. Though. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that was the one with the, uh, with the Dixieland chase. Yeah. I like that game. That's a, that's a, that, that was a, that was a lot of fun. That's the, uh, the uh, Lovecraft. Show okay. Yeah. Game. Yeah. I, I think I think that I think there's one previous one that had like creepy Watson, but yeah, that's actually all I know about the game is I've seen the videos of like that. <laughs> yep. Oh man, uh, I'm just I'm trying to imagine like this has to be a thing where like if you fail against a boss enough in a game, like the you know like the tenth time you get to them without beating it, they're like, "Fuck this! I just can't stand it anymore." You just keep on losing, and then he jumps into like lava or something. <laughs> yeah. Like that that would be that would be salt in the wounds. I'm I'm just hoping that you know in 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 Dark Souls, you know, if if apparently I keep you. Know, phasing into these alternate worlds or whatever sooner or later i have to reach one where they've already killed the boss <laughs> <laughs> to summon somebody else in that's that's how that happens <laughs> you're just there while they're killing them hey i did that when i was doing my uh no weapons only items run <laughs> so I, would, I would bring someone in we'd go to the boss fog and then i just kind of like roll around while they fought the boss yeah it's like technical virginity yeah <laughs> <laughs> What's what's funny is like I'd throw a dagger here and there when, mm -hmm. when I did have items and almost all the people that I played with caught on immediately to what I was trying to do. <laughs> like they totally got it. Um so it's it's just wonderful that like I think I feel like in the Souls games and, and I'm sure you guys have covered this a thousand times over more than anywhere else, like you find someone doing something weird and you're just like, Yeah, let's I'm down. totally Yep. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I always go for the uh, the Mad Phantoms in uh, Dark Souls Three. I want to see what people shit like what their gimmick is. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, the 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 number of like Shrek recreations are pretty pretty good. Shrek recreations are to Dark Souls Three as Teenage Mutant Ninja, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles creations are to uh, Dark Souls Two. <laughs> yeah, the, the 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 Shrek is strong. Um, 
<laughs> uh, ben, what does Sam say? Sam says, uh, when they're automatic and appear, whether you like it or not, it's incredibly annoying. I love Metroid Prime and Shadow of the Colossus, but those games needed to trust the player more. Generally, I go for hints as soon as I run out of constructive things to do in a game. For example, even though I would get stuck on puzzles for days at a time, I didn't need any guides for the witness until the more linear final area, because the game provided with uh, enough options at any given time that I never felt like I was wasting my time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Shut up, Dorman. <laughs> That's how I feel sometimes when I'm playing Shadow of the Colossus. <laughs> Shut up. I know I'm doing bad. Game. Wait, who, who's Dorman? <laughs> That's the, the, the spooky voice that talks to you and tells you to commit, you know, rock genocide. Fair enough. Dude, rock genocide. <laughs> that would be an my, awesome the, the... name for an album. <laughs> Terrible. It's a, Sounds like a successor to the band's warp tour. Ooh. I don't know. So something about that seems so unseemly. It sounds like the band that played in a, that crazy party in American history acts. <laughs> <laughs> um let's see here. Dennis, what does Jeff say? Jeff says the coolest thing about walkthroughs and hints is the way that YouTube and wikis have changed everything. We don't have to rely on sometimes wrong Prima and Brady games guides anymore. We can basically watch the entire game we are playing be played by someone potentially better than we are. But more importantly, that's made games way more accessible than before. Don't have the time to play a game yourself? Watch someone do it. Speed up options on videos are beneficial as well. Don't understand a specific part of the gameplay? Check the wiki or Reddit. Uh, the internet changed games and mostly for the better. I feel like the downside of this is most of the time I would rather watch a let's play of a game than actually play it. Mm. But I actually have to have things to talk about for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. But it's true. Like you would never just buy. Uh, well, I, I won't say you would never because I'm sure someone has done it. But the Prima guide for a game you don't own and just leaf through it. Oh, I've got tons of Prima um, guides for games I don't own. Yeah, Granted, I got them because we were going to throw them away at GameStop, but. <laughs> yeah. 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 I um I kinda wanna go back and look because I remember like the at least like way back in the day, they would often have some like cool extra features, which I guess back then that was like before you could download fan art or not fan art, but like concept art and yeah. stuff. But yeah. hmm. I have to so I, I see where Jeff is coming from. I <sighs> I get frustrated that like with newer games that don't have like something on game facts for as much as we lampoon game facts on abject suffering, like being able to control F or do like a, like a, like a web search for the area or so and not have, and just find the answer to what I'm looking for. Um, as opposed to, okay, here's a 15 minute video and having to kind of like search around in that to hear somebody meanderingly get to their point, much like I'm doing right now. <laughs> just kind of like i just i want everything to be bullet pointed less you know see i i usually just vaguely describe my problem and punch it into google and that usually works yeah alexa how do i kill the dragon <laughs> sorry i don't know the answer well neither do i, I alexa wait. come on <laughs> she said she doesn't know the answer uh that's great so angry <laughs> Two more days in solitary confinement, Alexa. There's <laughs> a locker inside a soundproof box. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Like just searching for Dark Souls, how do I kill the dragon? Actually, takes you directly to information on how to beat the Hellkite dragon. So, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> let's uh, let's go one more time around. Uh, we're, yeah. we're, we're pushing on time. I don't want to, you know, we've, we've, we've been away. Um, so let's, uh, let's, let's pick up here. That was Jeff. Uh, let's do chase. Hey chase. Thanks for helping with the wiki. Thanks for spearheading the wiki actually. Um, who writes, uh, um, it always varies from game to game. Um, if it is something I'm not terribly invested in, I will look at Google the first time I hit a wall for others like dark souls. I'm more willing to throw myself into the meat grinder for a few days before giving in. That said, after having a major area name spoiled for me, yes, that area by an impulsively purchased guide, um, I may have to rethink my strategy. I like that. He doesn't even say the name of the game, but I know it's dark souls. Oh, yeah, it's, it's definitely Dark Souls, because that's all anybody ever writes about. Um, <laughs> and also know exactly what area he's talking about. <laughs> yeah. 
that's a uh, I, I don't know it, it definitely has to vary by game like you can't just have like a dogmatic opinion that's where i get like it, it rankles me when somebody makes like a like a definitive statement like one way or the other mm. yeah uh are you saying that there's no way you can make a statement like that cole I mean, I just made a definitive statement about definitive statements, so... Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, David, what does David say? David says, I'm fine... Uh, overall, I'm fine with it. If someone needs help getting through a tough patch in a game, I'd rather them be able to get help than put the game down. I think the Professor Layton games do it really well. Hints cost coins, which are hidden out in the world, which encourages exploration. But a finite, so you really try to wrap your head around a puzzle before resorting to, I'm sorry, before resorting to use them. Yeah, I didn't even read ahead in David's response, but I was like, oh man, Professor Layton does this so well. <laughs> yeah. Nice. That's pretty good. Yeah. Just make a, like, just tying it to a system. Like, you know, you're, if you are engaging with a Professor Layton game, you're not going to run out of coins, but the threat of eventually running out of coins, it, it feels a little bit like a, like a Resident Evil thing. Not to bring that up to, uh, two, two things, you know, two times in a row. Um, but, uh, <laughs> they could just be like stringing you, stringing you along. So you always have like 10 coins and you don't want to get down to like single digits or whatever. Like, you know, you could, you could effectively have unlimited hints. But the fact that there's a number tied to it and you don't want numbers to go down, you just want numbers to go up is, is just, it's enough. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. The ben, numbers must go up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's like, that's every game. <laughs> How do Except I make golf. numbers go up, Alexa? Tell me. <laughs> um, uh, ben, what does Nathan say? Nathan says, I game mostly on momentum, and if I get stuck, I'll look at a walkthrough. Otherwise, I might just stop playing the game altogether. And if a game has a cool side areas, items, or characters that are missable, I'll use the guide. Uh, it used to be that I felt guilty about looking something up, but time is valuable. As long as I'm having fun, it doesn't matter how I get to the end result. Yeah. Real ends justify the means kind of guy. <laughs> that uh, I, I was again yeah ben you've got me really like sensitive about definitive statements that feels like the only <laughs> real answer to me but you know. <laughs> i don't know maybe no, that that might be just a little bit too definitive mm-hmm. it's a good answer i think it's a good answer if we're rating our answers <laughs> all right four, five out of five well no uh, there's one good answer everyone else sucks what people need to understand is we rate these questions like olympic judges like all of us hold up our number cards you know yeah, it doesn't really help much cheese. because yeah. we're all on skype so we can't see the numbers but <laughs> oh uh dennis round us out with eric eric says in game not so much but nothing quite like a wiki dive the unofficial Elder Scrolls pages was my jam at my older call center job between calls. <laughs> yeah, I think that's great. That like the maybe not walkthroughs so much, but just the the wikis and resources like that, just for interesting facts, um, can make a game extend way beyond you just playing it. Yeah, yeah i I would say that that would probably kind of be be my answer. Although I have to say, I wish some wikis would be a little more intelligent with um oh uh, with um avoiding spoilers like at least you know at least you know give a uh you know, you know be 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 self aware of that i like i uh what for like um oh fallout 4 i was looking up you know just just some like you know some trivial you know background information or something it's going through and it's like you know such and such you know character profile race uh sin it's like well fuck <laughs> <laughs> and then you just spoiled it for all of our listeners and this game oh, has been out for who. six months what that 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 yes there is at least one character in that game who is a sin there's <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing saying that's what the whole game's about we can't <laughs> confirm or deny you know I played that game, and I honestly don't know who you're referring to with that. So. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, the one, the one that actually kind of annoyed me on this, uh, or on like guides in general, is uh, La Mulana. Oh yeah, uh, that's a game I could see being very resistant to guides. Well, well, actually, the thing is, like, it's very much like, you know, 
you know, everything you see about it, you know, it's it's very much accepted that at some point you will need to use a guide to the point where like not our friend Riff. Well, fair enough. <laughs> but like uh but like, you know, um you know how they uh you know in Dark Souls people will do like, you know, the various challenge runs, like completing the game without a without consulting the wiki is considered a challenge run. Yeah. <laughs> um but the problem is there's like you know, how do you determine, like, when is it difficult enough? You know, when is this time that, you know, this completely, um, you know, obtuse, uh, you know, puzzle is the one I need help with, you know? Hmm. But, yeah. I don't know. That's just me. Yeah. I don't know. It sounds like what you're looking for is, uh, like, I, I want to make sure that this gets brought up. And if I was going to bring it up, um, I was going to look for somebody else who did. Uh, Jonathan Kufus um, uh, talks about the universal hint system, which it's pretty spotty. Um, like, you know, just they're, they're not an awful lot for uh, um, kind of like a lot of really recent games. Um, but uh-huh. UHS uh, is a wonderful um, kind of alternative to wikis and walkthroughs um, just because uh, each game kind of has like a series of vague questions like, oh, how <laughs> UHS, how do I defeat the dragon? Um, and then you, you click on you click on the button. It's like, oh, how do I defeat the dragon? And it says, well, have you found the wizard's key? Um, it's like, oh, well, where's the wizard's key? Well, have you been to so and so? Um, and it's spoiler free, and everything is just kind of like you are going down these little like uh, like canals, and it has different locks that you have mm-hmm. to do. It's like, okay, well, it'll be vague, vague, vague until it's like just as specific as you need, mm-hmm. um, and then you can like dip out. Yeah, so, I tried that. I tried that for Dark Souls, but every one I clicked just went to get good. Yeah, that's <laughs> annoying. What was your uh, you said, Ben? So it's a walk that only uses the Socratic method. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's called. It's like it, it's a command line, is what it is. <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to make sure that that uh, that got out there. I was going to mention it in mine, but I wanted to. I wanted Jonathan to get credit for bringing up this uh, this wonderful thing. Uh, we should probably do ours because I want to make sure we, uh, we 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 move along a little bit. But um, yeah. So for me, uh, whatever whatever gets you as far as you want to get in a game is uh is 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 kind of the, the the answer that i would give like for me you know the, the the momentary indignity of consulting a guide or a wiki or whatever um is uh is is far smaller than the uh just the satisfaction of saying well this is where this game ends for me because there may be something <laughs> easier it may be a bullshit difficulty wall it may be something that was very poorly signposted like i want to see as like i want to experience as much as i can you know mm mm-hmm. And so I've never I've never really had compunction around that. And I've never I've never had sympathy for the point of view that is like using that as a weapon. Like, well, you never really experienced the game if you did. So I'm like, fuck you. There's nothing telling <laughs> you can't tell me whether or not what I did is real. Come on. <laughs> um, I'm not a synth. <laughs> I love I love how this this has become like a podcast about epistemology. <laughs> yeah kind of like what's what's really you know um (laughs) that said man it is so hard like once you pop the fun don't stop like like (laughs) this the seal is broken like once you pop the fact don't stop exactly (laughs) exactly but um it's a i don't know heroin spelled w-i-n at the end yep Yep. <laughs> Stop pitching titles. Um, right. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. Pitch all the titles you want. Um, but but um, like you know, if you're like a third of the way through, I have to t- I have to stop myself from thinking. Well, I looked at it once. I might as well just have this open in front of me the whole time. See, mm-hmm. that's that's why I like uh like Dark Souls because like all the quote unquote spoilers are just like them name name dropping things that I have no idea what they're talking about, anyways. Yeah, it's it's hardly uh it's 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 hardly a spoiler if you don't have context for it. Right. I mean at least in my in my in my opinion. Um <laughs> but yeah, it's a uh, like, you know, do it, don't be afraid to go for it, but man oh man, self control is hard. <laughs> yeah. Um, David, how about you? I, I don't have a lot of a uh, lot of uh tolerance for like oblique uh oblique uh something. Obtuse. <laughs> I need a word uh, that begins with O. Uh, I need more context for it before uh, I can insert With word. just um, arcane puzzles. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, 
but I I don't know. I I think I think my favorite ever actually is uh, I I asked for uh, help once with a quest uh, just on general chat in World of Warcraft, and someone like gave me the advice for the uh, beating the quest in the form of a riddle, which was pretty <laughs> badass. That's pretty good. Yeah. I like that. That's much better than saying, oh, fuck you, fucking noob. Any of that. I just, I guess I mean just anti-hostility, and that's not a, that's, that's not a stance. That's just. We are hostile to hostility. <laughs> well, why wouldn't you toss to, why, why wouldn't you uh, tolerate my hostility? Um, ben, how about you? Uh, yeah, so I was trying to think of a couple examples. The witness came to mind as well. Like, um, so I would say that there's two types of puzzles in that game. One of which I think you're probably not supposed to use a walkthrough. I think there's, I would argue that there's enough information given there that you could deduce all the puzzles. And then the other one, I'm pretty okay. With, and I did in fact use a walkthrough on those because I don't know how you would figure it outside of wandering aimlessly around that game for hours on end. Those are the might... uh, environmental, like stand here for a while puzzles. Possibly. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows what's in that game? But uh, yeah, so that's kind of where the line is for me, at least. Um, I do think Uncharted is a good example of how to do hints or puzzles, though, and I think that's a good context in which to do it, where I don't think many people are looking to have really in-depth or detailed puzzles in that type of game. So. Yeah. How would you do it if Nathan Drake wasn't the kind of character who would talk to himself, though? Well, I mean, they'll they'll still have hints outside mature. of that as well. I suppose. Like, like you, if you press like the down button or whatever, they'll say something. I think it'll have like one type of hint where it'll be like kind of oblique, and then it'll press it again. And it'll say, "Just do this." Like, <laughs> <laughs> You know what? That's not what this game is about. And nothing is really what this game is about, aside from seeing more of it. Okay, cool. Let's go. Yeah. Um, Dennis, how about you? Yeah, I so I'll use walkthroughs, like you said, when I when I feel like, okay, well, I'm not going to get any further without this. Would have kind of exhausted my patience for the game. Um, but I have to be careful because I've I've got a lot of inner completionist. And if I start using the walkthrough and then start seeing, oh, I, I miss this thing or I need to get this thing, or then I go down the rabbit hole really quick of just needing to 100% the game mm. because I've got the information to do so. <laughs> like you, you, you've you already walked the trail. You know where the spring is. Yeah. <laughs> Although, so that, uh, that's that, that's the temptation for me. But yeah, I, I like the stuff that was brought up, like you said, universal hint system before I play that is is more oblique, doesn't give stuff away. Mm-hmm. But I, I'll, I'll sometimes just go for the obvious, um, you know, what's the best way to do X? I really recommend, like, like so go to go to Before I Play and just, like, look at an article for a game you've played and, like, see if it's your speed. Like, obviously, this is a mm-hmm. whole bunch of different uh, authors writing these things, but, like, it, it's a great resource, and I think that, that would head off. Like, I've printed out Before I Play, especially for WAF games, I've printed out Before I Play articles and, like, cross stuff off as I've gotten to it. Although, I, yeah, yeah I, I, I feel like... Especially for the the ones that really get on my nerves that like are where I want to walk through or some of the like in Dark, Dark Souls has some of this where it's like, oh, you know, you 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 know better uh you know better uh you know buy everything from this vendor because the game's gonna kill them off with absolutely no foreshadowing after you do this. Yeah, that's how life is, you know. Your uh, your your favorite uh, convenience store operator to sometimes see has a heart attack and dies. Yeah. So sometimes... Except I don't, I didn't spend, you know, sixty dollars to, you know, <laughs> buy life. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, I'm saying you know a lot. Uh, sometimes a sword happens in a person. <laughs> there are so many answers that we didn't get to um, in this, and if you want to check them out, um, I've, I've I've read ahead. They're all really good. Uh, go to facebook.com/slash the level podcast. Um, and also, uh, if you want to participate in future examples of these things, um, those go up on that Facebook page. Uh, uh, thanks to Dennis, uh, Tuesday afternoons or so. And we really appreciate uh, both him for doing that and you for answering them. Uh, let's uh, let's see here. Oh, I didn't need to say that. That's usually where we cut off. Why am I still talking? <laughs> that's where we that's where we'll cut off. Uh, yeah, I suppose. <laughs> Alexa, I still, how do I bail out of this conversation? I still, I still haven't cut. Oh, no. <laughs> the grind. Now it is time for The Grind, where we talk about the games we've been playing over the past two weeks or so. Um, does anybody want to volunteer to go first? 
I can go. All right, Dennis, go. Yeah, I've got um, one new game and then and then one old game that has gotten new life. Um, that game is Hohokam. Burr? And Hohokam. You hate that sp- game. How do you spell it? Yeah. H-O-H-O-K-U-M. I did hate that game. Like, I played it on Vita when I went on vacation um, probably a year ago or so. And, it, yeah, it just it just... There wasn't enough going on in the game. Like, it was pretty, but it was directionless, um, which turns out is perfect if you want your two-year-old to like video games. <laughs> so, so just know, patterns been... and colors and soothing yeah. music? Yeah. So I've been, I've been introducing or trying to introduce Luke to games um, and was like, oh, my God, this might be great. Like, there's, there's no pressure. There's no real objectives. You just kind of wiggle around as the snake thing, and sometimes things happen. Okay, and that is that is right on the speed of a two year old. So he uh, <laughs> he quite enjoyed controlling that. Um, this the is the thing, strongest damnation like... by the faintest praise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, backhanded compliments. <laughs> yeah, um, d- d- describe this setup to me, please. Like, are you are you is are, are you holding him kind of on the crook of your arm as you as you got the Vita kind of up there, and he's. He, he, oh no! So I, I don't. You actually the dangle so him got... by his feet over top yeah. of the Vita. <laughs> you I, you I, have no I, choice. I put it on the PS3, um, so he's playing it up on the big screen. Okay. And he kind of he kind of instinctively knows how to hold the controller, which is cool. Well, he's seen the it do it so much. Yeah, well, yeah, that's that's probably true. The thing I can't figure out is he naturally uses the right stick to move. Is he a, is he a righty? I I don't know. Like everyone uses the left stick, whether or not they're a righty or a lefty. I mean, like if 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 you're I'm, and I, he's I, he's actually those shown tendencies of being a lefty. Hmm. Like he throws left-handed right now, but he's so young that doesn't mean anything. Hmm. But anyway, yeah. So so he like he like is constantly moving the right stick <laughs> and won't won't really touch the left stick, which is what actually moves the character. Yeah. So I think if he ever if he ever makes that connection, the game will become that much more exciting for him, <laughs> as opposed to just the snake sitting still while shapes happen yeah 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 i mean like um, he might just start using his right hand on the left stick yeah yeah that 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 could be fine but then i mean i don't want to put in weak habits for when he's a super pro gamer i don't want to hold him back at all so. <laughs> no no you gotta you gotta just uh, you gotta correct that early tie his right hand behind his back that's right, that's right. wait maybe what sit on. <laughs> oh um but i will i will have maybe maybe some less faint praise is going back to that game the music is fantastic Hmm. Like just just the soundtrack is is really really enjoyable to listen to in that ambient music kind of way, um, and the dynamic stuff that happens um, in the music as you move around the world is just weaved really seamlessly in uh, to where you kind of know it's happening because you're interacting with these things, but it never feels um, obvious. Like it always feels like it was completely meant to be there and it was a natural part of the the soundtrack even though you're influencing what shows up and what doesn't so is there there, a portion of this that is like you're seeing it through his eyes because you're playing it together that's that's definitely possible i think the that has greatly increased my patience for the game (laughs) um the music i think having kind of tried it again i i i probably like on its own terms and if, you know, I, I think I would have come around on that again if I'd ex- been exposed to it uh, without him. I think I just maybe, maybe since I was playing it on the Vita, Vita, maybe I didn't have the sound on or wasn't paying as much attention to sound, yada, yada. Um, but I, I'm definitely kind of more willing to just ambiently enjoy the game or just sit there and let nothing of import happen while the character moves around the screen, which just, you know, having read a little bit about the game, it feels like that might have been what they had in mind from the start. Hmm. Of just like, hey, we want this to be more about being in a space than playing in a playing a game. Hmm. So um, basically, so. this game needs more marijuana. Yeah. <laughs> so have you been have, smoking with your kid, Dennis? Or yeah, I haven't, I haven't tried that angle yeah, yet. It's a baby vape. <laughs> a baby vape. Yeah, baby vape. It's like a little pacifier. Yeah, yeah. I mean. <laughs> He's not going to be doing any kind of tricks. You you tie his right hand behind his back, and then you just like you you just uh, encourage him to blow the biggest clouds of cotton possible. Yeah, he's. I mean, he's already hungry all the time, so mm. he's yeah. halfway there. He's a growing boy. He's a growing high boy. Oh my god, is he? Anyway, <laughs> so growing, so high. 
<laughs> so growing, much high. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the new game is a, a Vita game, and I think it's on PS4 as well, um, but an indie game called Nova 111. And it is a um, grid-based puzzler that also has real-time elements. And it mixes the like grid-slash-turn-based and real-time pieces together in a very, very interesting way. So you are a spaceship or a flying submarine or some kind of vehicle that has scientists on it. I'm not entirely sure. Looks, um, looks like an orange toaster with an antenna. Yeah. The, the yellow submarine. Why don't we go with that? Um, <laughs> it's it, yeah, it's, it's an odd looking vehicle. Um, that's been kind of some, some kind of timey wimey sciencey explosion happened and threw people everywhere. Um, and you're kind of picking up the pieces afterwards. Um, is this and the so, people? That's rather dark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's it's gruesome. No, but but you know, kind of trying to regather, I guess, everything that's been exploded all over the place. Um, it's a very colorful, light-hearted world. Hearted world. So I don't want to make it seem darker than it is. Um, but anyway, you, you move around levels on a grid, so everything is you know squares. Um, and most enemies only move after you move. So you move one square and then all the other things on the screen move one square. And it's like you a move one square. Rogue or net hack. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um except there are many different pieces that happen once you trigger them in real time. So there are stalag tights that are on the ceiling that if you move under them they will kind of jostle and fall in real time and you have to get out of the way uh, regardless of whether or not you advance a turn. Um, there are enemies that when they come into view, they'll latch onto your ship and start sucking life from you. Um, and they'll just continue doing so in real time until you reach them and, and kill them on the grid. Um, which creates these really interesting scenarios where you're trying to manage these enemies. Cause there's definitely like an optimal way to take enemies out in terms of like, okay, I position myself this way so that they move on this square and then I attack and then I move to this square, which means they'll move to this square and I attack and I kill them. So that, you know, it's it's very systematic with many enemies. But then you've got this element of needing to, okay, now I need to get to this other enemy really quickly, or I need to get out of the way of this falling stalactite, which throws an element of chaos on Sorry, top it's, of it's, the... it's it's stalactite. Stalactite? St yeah, st 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 stalactite, because they're on the ceiling. You've got to be messing with me. St stalagmite is from the bottom, stalactite is the top. Stalactite. I thought it was stalactite and stalagmite. Stalactite, yeah, stalactite. What, what, what text is stalactite? Oh, it's a, it's a stalactite, not stalactite. Okay. I'm so you got to be messing with me right now. That's a C because <laughs> it's on the ceiling. <laughs> is that is that for real? Yeah, I've been saying it wrong my entire life. Uh, no, I said it wrong too. We we were all saying it wrong. It's, and there, when there, it's there, on there's the ground, a... it's a stalactite, right? No, no. It's, so the ones on the ground uh, are 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 stalagmites. Yeah, and there's a G because got it's that. on the ground. And it's a stal stalactite because it's from uh, growing from the ceiling. There's a there, there's a there's a C. I just forgot the T when I corrected you. Well, Douchely, I might add. So how do you, how do you say the one on the ceiling? Stalactite. 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 <laughs> Good boy. There's a, there's a spiky thing falling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, there there's a ceiling rock. Yeah. So that's that's kind of the 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 shtick or the gimmick of this game. And it, it works really well for the, for the most part. Does, does that, does that get confusing? Like changing the, the turn-based roguelike stuff for like stuff that just happens regardless? Yeah. There, and I think the entire reason there is real time stuff is to inject chaos into something that would be otherwise a, a little bit too easy if you had all the time in the world to think through turns. Mm. So I think, I think it's, it's intentional um, to have that kind of bit of craziness there. And it, it works really well. My my one, I don't even know if it's a complaint, but it's a, the the one thing I think they could do better is they could make the levels a little bit shorter and more focused. Hmm. Um, so the the way you're scored is it counts the number of turns that you take, um, so the number of movements that you make, hmm. um, and you know overall the levels are just so long <clears throat> that you don't you know I, I wound up just kind of zoning out and not trying to do things efficient just because it took me so long to get through levels that it was hard to feel like any right or wrong step was making an impact. Yeah. Um, 
And and the levels tend to be kind of naturally broken up into individual puzzles anyway. Um, they're just like connected by a corridor instead of connected by an end of level. Uh, and so I would love to have seen them break those individual puzzles up into pieces a little bit more so you could feel like solving them was you know in, in a more or less efficient way was having more of an impact hmm. um the other th- thing i appreciate about the game <laughs> is uh your your uh abilities are powered by science <laughs> articulate to the point where when you level level up you get plus one science okay <laughs> to help run more abilities <laughs> So wait, that, wait, that, that you, is you mean that's not that's not how it worked when you were in college? Like you didn't, you know, complete your final exam and get plus one business? Yeah. <laughs> you got, I, I got four point oh electronic medias. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> huh. So yeah, a fun uh, little it, game. It's like oh, it's ahead. like Civ. Like that happens in Civ. You know, like science culture stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's uh, it, it's on PlayStation Plus, I think. Mm-hmm. This month or last month, something like that. Um, so happy little, happy little treasure that I found. Uh, it's also on Steam. Oh, good. Yeah, Nova Nova One Eleven. If anybody's curious about it, um, Dennis, have you played uh, Crypt of the Necro Dancer? I haven't. And that looks like a game I would enjoy. That seems like something that would just like like if I told you like, hey, go buy this, or if I or if I was like, oh, just here, have a copy of it. Like it would show up on playstation plus like next month it, it's yeah. something that's like really primed for it like determine whether or not you're like like you're down for it but like it combines two things you really love which is like rhythm game and turn based kind of stuff like the, the the beat you know like the the fact that everything is tied to the beat like in, injects that uh that chaos into the roguelike system like specifically mm-hmm. like not just word like in the way that it's used very usually uh, loosely but like you move everybody else moves like that injects that chaos that this does i think that you'd uh really really dig it yeah, that and um, Darkest Dungeon mm, are two yep. games that are like the in that designed for me vein that I have yet to try. Oh yeah, Darkest Dungeon because of the the card game kind of side of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's a great so that's, game. Yeah, that's me. Wait for the Vita, ver- uh, Vita version of that. I'm really curious when that's uh, coming out. Is it not out yet? I don't think it is. It may be. Okay. And like. If that's the case, well, hey, I've got something to play when I go home this weekend. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, David, what you got? Sure. Um, I've been playing a lot of Dark Souls. Nice. So, um, uh, where are you? I, at? So um, I got um, I summoned someone in and uh, beat the uh, evil tree. The, um, uh, the 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 corpse rotted great wood. Yeah, yeah. So that that was just uh, I know like that that's a thing. Um, <laughs> and then um, I actually even before that, but um. Uh, went and you know beat the night guy and got to the uh, what is it road of road of, uh, road of sacrifices. Yep. So uh, just before, um, like literally like five minutes before uh, the podcast, I um, extinguished the third fire in um, Fair and Keep. Oh yeah. So um, Fair and Keep's fun. <laughs> yeah. Um. I actually. Overall, I really enjoyed that area. Um, just like I kind of liked the the setting, and um, I I don't know if they've done similar things in previous games, but like that that was kind of like a a form of Dark Souls I've not seen before. F- Fair and Keep is like specifically the Blight Town of this area, the Blight Town okay. or the, the Valley of Defilement or the uh, um, you know the, the the gutter, any of those. That's like, hey, here's the here's the poison swamp. Sure, but uh, okay. So, so they have previously done like the you know the uh, you know limiting your mobility and like the uh, poison over time just from like being in the environment and stuff like that. Oh yeah, that goes uh, all the way back to Demon Souls. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. So, so that was um, a lot of fun. Um, although I have to say that the uh, the leaping um, uh, grooves, which you know are attacking because it's dark and you don't have a lantern. Um, <laughs> are complete bullshit <laughs> i forget these guys can you can you describe what they look like to me um they they're kind of tall tall and lengthy lanky and, and, and lanky. um they've sort of got like tentacles that uh, are like very very reminiscent of like cancerous growths of like tumors 
Um, the the wiki insists that they're supposed to uh, be goat like, although I can't see it. <laughs> but oh, um, uh, like you you said you said grew and like you totally meant like <laughs> that's what they're called G H R U grews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, and the the leaping ones basically have a um, a like unblockable grab attack uh, that has virtually no wind up and that they can chain. And they can just take a freaking ton of damage. It's just, it's highly, highly bullshit. Yeah. Well, I mean, like that, like that, that's the whole point of this kind of, this kind of stage is like they take mobility away from you um, in order to, uh, you know, increase the relative speed of the enemies. Be grateful that you can still roll because in 5-2, and I think maybe in Blighttown, uh, either rolls were disabled or you just, or they were severely slowed down. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what I end up doing there's uh, there's only like one of them you have to fight. Um, and what I actually figured out is um, the the um, oh pyromancies work really well on them. Yeah. So I I, I kind of really feel good bad. Um, oh, sorry, gone. Pyromancy's really good in this game. Yeah. yeah. Um, I feel a little bit bad in that a a significant number of the enemies, and in particular the more powerful enemies, I've cheesed. Um, but on the other hand, it's kind of more fun to me to figure out ways to cheese the enemy yeah. uh, than it is to like legitimately beat them. Hey, turnabout's fair play, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I I think my favorite though is actually right before that. Um, in order to uh get um get down into the swamp you have to go down this like super uh long ladder and there's several um like um knights that uh guard it and the thing is they are programmed to try to follow you down the ladder but they're not (laughs) programmed to actually be able to climb ladders so they'll (laughs) literally just walk off the edge yep so you just (laughs) trap them yeah so um but yeah um so yeah, other than that, um I I've been uh you know doing that and then a lot of farming. I'm trying to get up to um I'm playing around with some of the the heavy weapons, uh some of the like uh ultra great swords and stuff. Yeah. So um I'm trying to get up to being able to uh single wield uh some of them. Hmm. Yeah. But um it's fine. I don't know, is is it like not honestly, like I'm not saying this to like just jump on the like oh poise, uh, you know poise or MFG train, but like without poise, there's straight up no reason to equip heavy armor, right? Oh, for sure. Like uh, as, as it stands right now, uh, if, if you know if, if you're listening to this later, uh, check and see that this has changed. But like vitality is a dumb stat. Like the only reason to do it is to sink some levels into being able to wear the armor that you want that looks like what you want it to look like. Okay. As it stands right now, it's better to just like make sure that you have any kind of armor equipped um, on every slot. Right. Exactly. You know, as opposed to just this. And I apologize because like several weeks ago you brought up the poise thing, like the day that it broke and I had no idea that it was there. No I was problem. like, Oh, there's no, no problem. There, there's no poise problem. And I was like, Oh, well, I was like, well, no, that's totally not the case. I just didn't know about it. Sure. And I was like, no, Oh, no something's problem. up. I'm being staggered real easy. But so I want to make that, make that clear. But like right now, like just make sure that you're like getting, uh, there's a fantastic video you can find. Um, that is, uh, like explaining how defense works in this, but like equipping, equipping heavy armor specifically so you don't get staggered is not a thing right now. Right. Well, because the reason I ask is I looked at like, um, you know, I roll, uh, start out night and um, like at least as far as I am in the game, like that's actually the heaviest, uh, heaviest meaning defense, not necessarily like weight heaviest um, armor I've found still. Yeah. Um, But like if I go and equip like, not necessarily my lightest armor, but like you know, some like very light, you know, some some of the like kind of more assassin themed armor. Yeah, like it. The difference in mitigation is like one percent. Yeah, hmm. but um, which like at that point, you know, save like save that, <laughs> right? So you can equip a bigger sword, you know, or right, not even exactly. that because like right now everything favors at least in PvP favors quicker quicker weapons. But I I, I don't want to discourage anybody from rolling like heavy swords because that's fun. Really- yeah, I mean, I'm I'm kind of overall doing a uh like 
you know, quality builds what I'm going for overall. Qu- qual- um, quality being dex and strength, as opposed right, to, exactly. like, not just like, hey, this is the best build, but like, that, right. that, that is a term of art. Right. Yes. Sorry. Sorry, no, uh, and, uh, no, no. Um, and but overall, uh, the the reason I was going with that is I think it it seems like it changes by the level, but like particularly in this area, it seems like there's not a lot of like enemies that are actually armed with like shields or weapons, and so basically having something that's just large enough to just smack an enemy down yeah. is a really good defense in this particular level yes um in that particular uh, in that level just because everything is kind of like swamp folk right um, exactly <laughs> and that, that that's going to change pretty quick as long as you're right. as long as you're able to pivot yeah yeah because like mo uh like when i was going through um oh um undead berg or whatever it's uh undead um Sun. um you know you know what i mean um yeah that i was doing straight up like sword and shield yeah um so yeah uh the the one thing I haven't been able to figure out though is what what attack the attack numbers actually mean because I'll like like within the uh, great swords you know I'll have ones that have significantly higher um, like attack power mm-hmm. that do significantly less damage than others. That may be a function of uh, scaling as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's the that that's the letter grade that you see at the bottom of that. Like check and make sure it lines up with your stats. See, but I thought I thought though then that letter grade was supposed to be reflected in the stat power though, or in the attack power though, is it? Mm, I don't. Isn't that like the plus whatever or minus whatever? I uh, maybe. I don't know. Okay, like, I, I I don't know, but yeah, I, I haven't paid enough attention to it in Dark Souls Three. Like to sure, know, like sure, I, that's fine. I always look at just kind of like, oh, what what do what what number do I see do I see above the enemy's head? with this weapon as, as compared to the other weapon. Sure. sure. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, um, I don't know, like overall, um, uh, I'm enjoying it. Um, I don't know. I've, I haven't really screwed around much with the, any of the like factions or anything like that. I don't know if that comes into it's, uh, like more prominence at some point or what? Not in the story. Um, they just kind of change the the multiplayer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because like every so often, like I'll come upon an NPC or something that seems to be like allied with a certain faction, and they'll kind of like exposition me a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So like it'll change NPC stories. Like there, you know, eventually you're, you're going to get to a faction that if you join it, um, an NPC is just going to say, you know, what? fuck you. Um, <laughs> but huh. um, but otherwise. Um, most of it's just like, hey, if I get invaded, I want to have somebody come help me. Yeah, yeah. Um, which which is um, definitely a thing because I know still still not sold on the whole PvP thing. But you know, <laughs> I love it so much. <laughs> really? Yeah. I just I I know if if they did not punish you for disconnecting, I would probably disconnect on people. Yeah. But I mean, different different strokes. All yeah, that. yeah. I mean, to be fair, like, I don't think I've gotten any uh, NBC or any um, PvP encounters that haven't been, like, NP or any invasions that haven't been NPCs so far. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, I- I'm I'm going to be curious what you think about the uh, the boss of Farron Keep, actually, um, sure. because uh, I-, I love it. It's super good, um, mm-hmm. at least in-, in my estimation for it. But, um I don't know, just like knowing that you don't like the bosses as much, um, the 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 way that this articulates, I think might might get around that. Sure, um, just... that'll be interesting to see. Yeah, yeah. What I'm at this uh, point is, um, uh, again, from doing the wiki, I'm I'm prob- uh People seem to really suggest uh, pausing where I'm at and like farming some of the dark wraiths to get their weapon. Yeah, the so uh, the dark sword's great. Like yeah. that is a. Uh... Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's that's uh kind of kind of what I'm trying to uh figure out is, you know, some of the upgrades. Hey, no. I will say I I understand why they did it, but I'm a little bit disappointed that they've um de-emphasized um like upgrades and items as much as they have in this one. Mm, they 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 took away armor augmentations, which were always uh like you did it until you got enough stability or enough poise. Which like sure. well, doesn't matter anymore. So right, uh, but um, 
but like it's still totally a thing with weapons it's just kind of like oh i need to be like roughly keeping pace with where i'm at in the game sure i guess um until like until basically like swamp of sorrows i don't think i'd replaced literally a single item what i just got the um dragon quest uh crest shield and that's the first shield i've gotten that hasn't been like some huge tower shield that's been better than the starting knight shield yeah the start like the starting like the nice starting gear is amazing Okay, so that could just be like a, a process of like what yeah. class I rolled. That's uh like the totally um like oh, the, the, okay the, yeah that's uh that that's definitely a thing. Okay, fair yeah. enough. Both so. I think the knight and the adept start with either one hundred or very high physical defense. Okay. Hey Ben Dennis, you still there? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. I just want to make sure. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So, quick question, and maybe this is, like, blatant spoilers, but, like, is this supposed to be, like, the same areas I've been going through in Dark Souls 1? No. Okay. It's supposed to be a different place? Yes. Okay. Until it's not. Until it's not. <laughs> <Fair enough. laughs> it, it, it plays really fast and loose with it like okay bring bring your own interpretation to it because there's very little in the text to like say yay or nay um okay. same thing with like dark souls too right yeah because i mean they they definitely use like different names for everything yeah um and you know stuff like that but like other like presumably firelink shrine is firelink shrine yeah. um and or, like, or until um, it's not because that could just uh, that, that may not be a proper noun and just a just a name for that enough. kind of place yeah Fair enough. And, and like, there's definitely some, there's definitely a lot of equivalency. Yes. Which but, uh, yeah. is totally, uh, you know, that's just, that's just what happens in Dark Souls 3. Sure. Sure. Yeah. yeah I, I know. I'm, 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 I kind of like that they brought back, uh, brought back, um, like the, the geography, uh, corresponding to itself. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, even, even though it's still a sprawl, there's, uh, yeah, the, I mean, there's there's a cool one, you know, you know the uh, the I don't know Wolf Tower place, like getting up to the top of that and being able to like look back and like directly trace back pretty yeah. much everywhere you've been uh, so far is pretty yeah. cool. Or uh, like the, the the starting point in the Undead Settlement, you can actually like look back um, and see all of the uh, the Flame Towers in Farron's Keep. Yeah, yeah, I actually uh, I actually noticed that, and that was one that like. That was one of the big ones that I was like, hmm, I wonder if I'll get to those. <laughs> yeah, of course you will. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I, I do want to know, will, will I get to the uh, to the uh, icy mountains? Because that, that's the one thing that was like a completely different biome. <clears throat> um, uh, before we go away from Dark Souls 3, um, I want I want to make sure this is super cool. Uh, the next guest on Bonfireside Chat uh, is going to be Stuart Wellington from the Flophouse. Sweet. Yes, I'm so excited about it. Oh man, uh so that that that's going to be fun. Uh did you have anything about uh, anything else about uh Dark Souls 3, David? Um no no, I think that's um I think that's it. Okay. Um Ben, how about you? I I can tag team with one of yours. Okay. So let's do Uncharted 4. Okay. How far are you into it? Uh, so I just finished the, uh, uh, for lack of a better word, the Italian job. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Fair. So <laughs> it's like, like I just, I finished off at like chapter six or seven or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, so, so like in the, in the arc of the story, it's, it's, uh, it's the first kind of like real mission that happens after like all of the, uh, the rising action starts up like, okay, the... we, all of the pieces of history are in place. Um, and now this is like, okay, this is all happening yeah. in present day and we are kind of like advancing the, you know, all of the, all the key players are in place at the moment. Yeah. I, so I don't know what to say about the game. <laughs> like I've already beat the game. So like, I don't, I don't know. What to, I want to do a spoiler cast of it. <laughs> uh, we can totally do that. We can totally do that after, uh, after I finish it. Sure. Um, so can, can, can I lead this because I, I think I have a good sense for like what's what's novel about this uh, Ben I'm I'm disappointed that you didn't tell me this was a grappling hook game <laughs> okay 
<laughs> like, uh, if there's Wait, any... is that a genre now? If there's anything that anybody should know about me, it's that grappling hooks are my special thing. Really? <laughs> really? Um, you might like Dying Light. <laughs> No, I just feel like, so, so far I've not seen it like really integrated into like combat, although I could totally see like, oh, here's a post in the middle of the room, swing around and like totally, uh, hoff, get off these guys. Um, but just, uh, the way that it changes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> the way that it changes the space, uh, is great. And you know, it's, it's presented as something that, uh, Nathan's brother taught him in the past. So I'm like, mm. I could have been grappling, hooking all along. <laughs> yeah. That's one of the problems with it is, Yeah. <laughs> He apparently knew this the entire time, but just decided not to do it in any of the previous games. Yeah. Well, dude, he w- he was always like, you know, after a plane crash or something like that, he didn't just have a grappling hook. His shoulder I mean, was geez. dislocated. Yeah. <laughs> His shoulder was old. He was always out of its socket. <laughs> so I like that. Uh, I like that a lot just because, uh, you know, it's, it forces you to look at the at the environment in a, in a different way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and. Good. I think I think the other big mechanic they added is sliding and jumping where like jumping on a surface that you will slide down it for some amount of time and you'll mm-hmm. either need to jump away or grappling hook away to something else. Yeah, it's like a it's almost like a QTE a little bit. It's like, OK, well, you're either going to drop into the abyss or do this thing that will save you. Mm hmm. You will either hear a voice over your friend crying that you have died, or you will just go on to the next part of the game. <laughs> nice. Um, one thing that I noticed, so I, I never played... Drake? Like... Drake? <laughs> Drake! <laughs> it's like, oh, no. <laughs> Very apropos. Um, you gotta do it in Sully's voice, though. Drake. Drake. Um <laughs> No, that's uh, um, okay. So I never played Uncharted three. Um, okay. Did Uncharted three have the stealth marking? Uh, I don't think so. I think that was a new mechanic in this one as well. Yeah, they stole that wholesale from Metal Gear Solid five. I'm so happy they did. What yeah. is this? So, so you, you can mark people and it'll follow them persistently as they do their patrols. Yeah. So if you're in stealth so mode, so that that go- is that was a feature in um, The Last of Us prominently i can't so, remember so like, are we what? talking like the x x ray vision thing like fallout does it's or not an x-ray v- i i guess i guess a lot of stuff is done this so so in uh in last of us i remember you had the like the the super hearing mode cry. where you could see stuff through the uh, far cry does this as well like far cry has has the, yeah. the, 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 mar- the marking stuff um but like last of us has okay you can you can like crouch down and like see enemies through walls this oh, is yeah. if if you have line of sight to somebody and you're in stealth mode you can hold down like L L two like aim towards them and then press in the right stick to like put a little uh, triangle above them so you can yeah. like oh if I spot if I spotted you I always know where you're at. Um, that was in I, I guess specifically the Last of Us multiplayer was okay. a large 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 part of it is you know if you saw someone it was it was kind of team you editing almost that teammate. you would yeah. yeah you point them out and it was actually it was actually an ability that you could you know depending on your character build. Um, put points Hits. into and like make it so that it would mark them for longer periods of time or so that the mark would splash and you would see anyone else near them like mm. so invest they, in they, hearing aids yeah <laughs> <laughs> so and very much it was like a triangle above their head so i think they cut their teeth on that that um mechanic in the last of us yeah it was it was good i'm glad it made it through yeah there's a lot of last of us dna in this i feel like which same that, i cannot think of a, a, a scenario in which that would ever be a bad thing oh it's it's totally not so like i'm thinking about like uncharted 2 and i may be you know incorrect in this but like there was not an awful lot of interior in in uncharted 2 it was either you were on city streets or you were in like ruins and stuff with this at least so far and you know it's kind of because they've very wisely kept the stakes low at the start like i've only killed like five people (laughs) <laughs> but like most of it's been like going through inhabited areas and they even do it's it's kind of, kind of cheap you walk through uh nathan drake's house and it's mm-hmm. kind of like oh like they, they they have a water cooler probably because they have like well water or something like like all those different details that you saw <laughs> in uncharted or sorry <laughs> in uh uncharted fungal edition um no in, uh, <laughs> in, in, in the last of us um it's kind of like oh they just they, they just took that and brought it forward like it's it's a real pixar like thing like oh well we figured out how to do hair so we're gonna make the incredibles and now we're going to just like put that in everything 
Um, and it really benefits it. Like you're walking through some of these really awesome, like, you know, built for human spaces that are not, uh, <laughs> that are not like ruins and stuff. Like this is such a fucking pretty game. Yes. Yeah. The art style is on point for yeah. sure. Um, yeah. And this is the first game I've seen with, uh, yeah, as you said, you were, uh, I, I believe you've gotten to a point where, there's like an art show, or I don't want to say too much, but it's it's like an auction for an artist. There's, there's crowd scenes that you. Oh seen. yeah, yeah, and that's that seems to be a new mechanic in this game. Yeah, that was the previous ones. <laughs> I caught my breath when I walked into that room. I was like, I know, like I know this is a thing. Like you, you see this in places, but like I don't know, like this is like this is something that will always get me because it feels like the number of bodies on a screen is the thing that is most tied to like oh we just have better hardware now. Yeah. You know? Mm. Yeah. And I think uh, another mechanic they've introduced in this one, which it may not be too noteworthy, but tall grass, where <laughs> you can do stealth mode where you can kind of roll from tall grass to tall grass or to stay I, hidden. Or as I call them, the killing fields. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah, I don't know. that. The mechanics they've added are kind of bizarre, but they work and, you know, they kind of make it a more easy to play experience. So yeah. I'm fine with it. Like, I'm down for it. Like, so I remember like Uncharted 2 for as, for as great of the game as it is, if you're down with Uncharted's thing, like enemies are still like bullet sponges, at least right now, because it's something that can change. Obviously, they can always increase the, the health in enemies. Like when I headshot somebody, like I hit their off button. There's like, yeah. Down. Yeah, Which and actually I do... isn't that realistic, but that's one other thing. <laughs> but but Wait, I mean, like... what? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, uh, head headshots, particularly with like pistol caliber, don't work nearly as well pe- as people think they do. <laughs> so, so so realism aside, it you know I'm aiming for the head because I want to kill them quicker and right. to kill them as quickly as possible using that, um, and not have to like sink three or five shots into somebody's dome feels good from a, from like from a gameplay side of things mm-hmm. and i like the reticle feedback where it's like an x if you hit them but then also like a star if you hit them in the head yep and then it's also you color-coded. get a gold star <laughs> the reticle is also color coded based on whether or not you're hitting their armor or whether you're hitting their health it's so oh. subtle too it's like yeah. a couple of frames yeah so i don't know that's cool yeah i mean it they they have done a lot of really good things with this game. Like it is a technically sound game, I will say. So it sounds like you I, have a, like there's another shoe there that I haven't it, gotten to yet. Like is there, there is. is there a downside? That shoe will come with the spoiler cast. <laughs> is like so, vehicle shit or what? Oh, uh, we'll 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 save it. We'll talk about that part later. I so, want to know. Dude, you're asking Ben this question. You're yeah, 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 yeah. As, as I talk into a brick wall. Um, so this this might be spoiler casty, but I've I've never actually made it that far in a charred game. Do they do they all eventually go off the or kind of off the rails? Um, like um, oh, Tomb Raider star in terms of like randomly becoming supernatural. In terms of Uncharted one, two, and three, yes. Okay. Who knows what happens in Uncharted four? <laughs> in Uncharted, well. I'm not going to comment <laughs> because you're not going to acknowledge that Uncharted Three exists. <laughs> well, Uncharted that, what? I'll, I'll rationalize it by saying I don't want to spoil anyone who would play Uncharted Three. But. Yeah, I, I mean, like you, you can get the Nathan Drake collection or whatever. Like that, that apparently is a is a good product. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Huh. Uh, so, like talking about the story a little bit, that's no secret that Nathan uh, that, that Nathan's brother is involved in this uh yes. sam 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 drake i like that because it's such a sitcom thing like the ne'er-do-well well brother rolls into town and wait like... sam his name is sam sam drake yeah what was the main character's name in the last of us Blah. joel joel oh joel okay for some reason i thought it was sam i was gonna be like they reused the freaking name <laughs> they already reused the actor all right never mind <laughs> they're actually the same character plot twist <laughs> Yep, they take place in the same universe. Um, and, but you meet his brother in The Last of Us, so that would be really weird. He looks yeah. really similar, doesn't he? He's got kind of the same, uh, the, the, like the same hair a little bit. Yes, <laughs> but does he tuck his shirt halfway in? Because that like is that. the defining character trait. I, I like that. I, I will defend the half tuck because you want asymmetry in a character design. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> 
Pulls the shirts. He's a bad boy. Yeah, he doesn't yeah, care about know. tucking all no. of his shirt in. <laughs> Just more comfortable this way. But he's still kind of classy. Yeah, <laughs> half classy. Yeah, but I just, I, you know, like <laughs> it's for, simply a trope. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for, for 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 a game and for a series that is very much like, oh, here is like National Treasure, Da Vinci Code, Tomb Raider, like all this kind of stuff, like rolled up. Like they kind of sell human drama. Like um, a, a majority of the time, you're like seeing people who have close relationships talking to each other, mm-hmm. and like that that kind of like interpersonal stuff happening. Like that's all really cool. Um, and that's that that sold really well and just kind of getting getting that history and getting that sense of like jealousy between Sam and Sully and all that kind of stuff. Like I'm I'm down for it. Like I, I'm I'm in. I'm invested in these characters, even though I've only ever played one Uncharted game before. So Which was the one that you played before? Two. All right. So you're playing the good one. So you're <laughs> this is good. Yeah. I'm on the like, I'm on the Star Trek plan. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah, this this game is definitely the narrative game is better than Uncharted Three, and it's more aligned with like Uncharted Two in yeah. terms of quality. So, nice. yeah, cool. Well, that is uh, that that is a wonderful uh, thing to hear. Mm-hmm. Did uh, Ben? Did you have anything else you wanted to say about uh, about Uncharted? There's plenty I want to talk about, but I think I kind of want to save it for a spoiler cast, okay. and then we can kind of delve into it. Yeah, so. um, I'll talk to you once I finish it. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Uh, what else did you play? I know you said you had two. Yeah, so the other game that I played is I picked up FTL after I beat mm. Uncharted a couple weeks ago. I've seen you play yeah. this. Yeah, oh, that's right. I sent you guys a picture of uh, my first crew, which I named after all of you guys. In grand tradition. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they died really quickly. So <laughs> because... as, soon as, as soon as someone boarded my ship, I had no idea what to do, and so they all got beaten to death. Well, we all so. caught fire, and you didn't know to, fl- to, to, to <laughs> blow open the bulkheads yeah <laughs> wait is that seriously the only way the game has for you to put out fires no if you if you i guess i forgot the that. fire if you walk into a room with a fire you'll start putting it out with an extinguisher or you can open up whatever the room is to space and all the oxygen will leave and you can put it out so, the fire that way. so yeah. this takes place in the far future where fire suppression systems haven't been invented <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they forgot it it's so far into the future that it's the past Cost too much power to make a fire system. <laughs> Got to get those guns going. But uh, so I guess the, I mean so the game's good. I've only played and beaten the game on easy mode. I tried a normal mode and got crushed. Like even after beating the game a whole bunch on on easy mode. That's a so, that's a feat, man. Like that last boss on easy mode is still like a bear. Yeah, just yeah. Us. Um, literally you get attacked by a giant bear, yeah, yeah. The, bear the turn-offs. second stage yeah. all the bears are boarding your ship and then attacking <laughs> members is terrible where do they get them yeah i i don't know it's space uh, russia they get them from space russia but uh i so i mean i guess the point of the game after you've kind of mastered it with one ship is the goal is to kind of play all the different ships that you can unlock and beat it with all the different ships that you can unlock and so I've gotten through, I think, about five or six of the different ships, and there's still about two that I haven't unlocked yet, so I'm still trying to play through with those. Yeah. Um, I've kind of slowed down a little bit. I played a whole bunch of it the last two weeks, but I've gotten to the point where I've kind of get the pattern, and so I'm okay with kind of not playing as much of it. But yeah, yeah, it's been a lot of fun, though. Hmm. Um, I think the most handedly I beat the boss battle was with the... Uh, the mantises race the race where you board the other person's ship and then kill all their crew members as a way to win and then so, you like loot their ship uh you get the same amount of loot loot as you would as if you blew up their ship which doesn't oh. make as much sense yeah you, you would think I feel like, like oh, you should be able to like literally like pawn their ship off parts of their ship you know totally agree <laughs> mine yeah. now mine now. yeah you, because you've captured captured an entire ship. It's like you should be able to sell that and like make a whole bunch of money, but not the case. But that's okay. I still was able to win with that the ship. Mantis people are actually communists. <laughs> so I was able to get four mantis people, and on the B ship type for that, they have like a four teleporter, and so with that, like, it's pretty unstoppable because you can pretty much wipe out any sort of crew with that, as long as you put them in a four room and I don't know, kind of manage which rooms you attack with that. So 
I don't know. So that was fun. Uh, I still need to unlock the rock people. I haven't got that. Mm-hmm. And I think I just unlocked the slug ship. And so I, I need to go through and beat the game with that. What's the uh, the slug racial uh, quirk? Um, I know one of the quirks is they can see adjacent rooms. So, like, uh, they don't start off with a camera system so that you can't see in all the rooms. So the way, the way it works for anyone who hasn't played this game is it, each room in the ship kind of has a different function. Um, one might be an engine room, one might be a weapons room, one might be whatever. Uh, but one of the rooms in most of the ships is like a camera room. And what it does is it allows you to view in all the different rooms in the ship. Um, if that room gets destroyed, you can no longer view in all the rooms. You can only view in rooms that you have people in. It's like a line um, of sight thing. Yeah. And so the problem is, is like if there's a fire going on somewhere in the ship and you don't have a person in it, you don't know that there's a fire there and you don't know that it's spreading. So there's definitely problems that can arise if you don't have a camera room. Um, the slug special ability is they can see into adjacent rooms. Hmm. So a, sing- a single person kind of gives you a glimpse into like four or five rooms, depending yeah. upon what room they're in. Does that work diagonally? Like, can you see like one up and over? It's only orthogonally, so it's okay. only doors that are connected to the room that you're in. Okay, you only see into those rooms. So no, the is idea. The... Is... Go ahead. Sorry, is this the game where you don't know the layout of the enemy ship, so that like when you're like targeting an area on the enemy ship, you don't necessarily initially know what like systems you're targeting. No, you always know what systems it is. You just don't know if there are people in it or not. And so, okay. if, but if you, if you advance your camera room or upgrade it or whatever, you can you can see into the enemy ship. And then if you advance it even more, you can see more detailed things like uh, how quickly their guns are charging and yeah. things like that. Okay. I wonder what yeah. game so, I'm thinking of. If I remember correctly, the strategy for taking out their ships was pretty one dimensional in that. And I might be saying it slightly wrong because it's been so long since I've played, but like you focus on their shields until their shields are down and then you focus on uh, the engine until the engine blows up or yeah, whatever. There, there was like, there was like a very a, clear heuristic and it didn't really change ship to ship. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it kind of depends. Like there's some situations like if a ship, uh, it'll tell you like, Oh, a ship's charging its engines is going to try and jump off. And sometimes you have to sacrifice going for the shield and just go strictly for the engine. So try and slow them down. Um, mm-hmm. Other times, yeah, I mean, it depends on kind of what your weapon layout is. But by and large, yes, you definitely want to do shield first. There doesn't seem to be a huge downside to doing that. Um, but so it's kind does of a, something it, bad happen if a ship gets away? Uh, it depends. You don't if get their like resources. A, yeah, yeah, there's always that downside. And then other cases, if it's like a scout ship, sometimes it can warn the fleet that's pursuing you. And so it'll, uh, I think, double the probability of running into a ship the next time you jump. Mm. so yeah so yeah i mean it's a super fun game uh i think it i mean i know i think my first interaction with it, i know you guys had talked about it i think cole i think you might have been the first person to play it on the podcast maybe maybe like um, this is like it's a it's a i mean it's, it's not an old, old game, game but like it's a like 2012 2013 it's one of the first yeah. like like oh we found out this on kickstarter and it's an amazing game games yeah um so I think my only interaction outside of hearing about it on the podcast is I saw it during Duck Spring because I think uh, I forget who was streaming it at the time, but I think two different people were playing that game like in the wee hours of night on a Saturday night. So mm-hmm. that was a lot uh, of nice. fun. Though. Nice. Yeah. Which I, I don't know if you're set up to stream, but I was actually going to say that it's it's probably pretty good streaming material. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll have to look into doing that. Yeah. So, yeah. That's, That's awesome. Fun. Yeah, yeah, like I'm, I'm happy you like that because I remember, like, what was it? A couple, couple weeks ago, we said, "Oh, you should totally play this." Mm-hmm. Now that you have the thing, I'm going to take credit for you liking this thing. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well played. Yeah. Is that all? That's all I got. Okay. Um, since I kind of rolled mine mine in with yours, I'm going to make like a different recommendation. Um, okay. uh, hmm. it's not not a game, but uh, I think that a coffee table book is a is an amazing thing. Like, especially, like, specifically, like, a kind of book that is meant to, like, you know, just, uh, like, look at some pictures and, like, you know, read some cool stuff, maybe a couple pages at a time. Um, I've really gone down a rabbit hole with three of these. The Atlas of Remote Islands, the the Atlas of Cursed Places, and the Atlas (laughs) of Abandoned Cities. Oh, that sounds fantastic. (laughs) Do these... Do these sit on your coffee table? No, no, they're on my, uh, they're on my bedside table, actually. 
like uh, when I'm waking up or when I'm going to sleep, I'll just say, I want to hear about this awful place. <laughs> well, well, I mean, you put the coffee table books on your bedside table in the hopes that it'll lure uh, coffee there coffee. overnight so yeah. that, you know, it's ready when you wake up in the morning. Yeah, my animate coffee cups. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is, like, this is super bizarre, but, like, I don't know where else to talk about these. But they have been amazing to just, like, read about these kind of just, like, fucked up places. Like that's really cool. Specifically, like the island one is like beautiful places and like awesome stories about like indigenous peoples and you know nuclear test sites and stuff like that. But uh, you know, like any of them are are, are really cool. So I want to you know I want to bring that to people's lives. I remember growing up, uh, we had um, at the the place that like I did daycare had this group. There's this book of like is like a children's encyclopedia. And one of the books was just called, like, Places to Know. And it was, like, that sort of thing of just, like, you know, this random selection of, like, you know, just, like, weird, you know, weird things in the world. You know, you know ghost towns and, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. And it was pretty awesome. So yeah. I, I could see this. I could see this being being pretty epic. Yeah, it's like it's like a book of lists or an almanac kind of thing. Like yeah, it's a... yeah. I don't know. It's 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 really cool. So I just wanted to bring that up, especially like if you play a lot of video games and you want to know about awesome places. See, cool. I'm kind of surprised some... not not to like too overtly tie this back into our normal themes, but I'm kind of surprised there hasn't been like a Dark Souls uh, coffee table book. I mean, like they're the Design Works books. Oh, is that a thing? Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, books of uh, concept art and stuff like that, and also like interviews and things. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so are you all ready to button it up? Yeah, let's. Okay. The that has been level number 151, a little bit longer than usual. But uh, again, I apologize for being away last week. We're going to try not to do that again for a little while. Um, let us see here. What can you do? What can you do? Uh, word of mouth is especially important for us on this show, even within we, even within the network, honestly. Um, so if you like the show and you know you know people who are down with podcasts and gaming podcasts in particular, uh, sharing the word of the level uh, goes a very long way for us. And we appreciate everybody who has done that so far and is considering doing that uh, right now as we say this. Um, but otherwise, there's kind of the usual stuff, the the ratings, the reviews, liking us on Facebook, that is facebook.com slash the level podcast. All of that. Uh, there's a PO box that is PO box. Uh, sorry, it's a uh, duckbeat.tv PO box 27105 Cincinnati, Ohio 45227. Uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, when I announced my employment troubles, uh, somebody sent me like a, uh, a thing of like vinyl duck feed clings. Um, there are huh. a bunch of them. So I'm going to send them out, uh, to other hosts, uh, so that they get them. Uh, if you send something to me that is uh, that is meant for somebody else, I will forward it along. Um, but that is kind of a way to, uh, you know, if you have like a letter or, uh, you know, so, so, something else like that, that is a way to get it to us. Hey. Um, yeah. Uh, what am I thinking of? What am I thinking of? Am I missing anything, guys? I think that's it. Seconded on think... uh, sharing it with a friend. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, cool. I, I just... Uh... This is, I guess, the official thing, but it seems like we're all we've all been kind of trying to do some uh, streaming. Yes. So, uh, you know, th th no real rhyme or reason to that, but just you know, keep your eyes open. Uh, you know, it's something I think we're all trying to you know do a little bit more of. Definitely. Um, and a great way to learn about that is to go to uh, if, if you're a backer on Patreon, uh, go to the or to go to the Slack, um, either in the Level channel or on uh, the Streamy Weemy channel. Um, that is Streamy Dash Weenie. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um you can uh you, you can see us put that up i'm gonna start streaming more now that i've uh kind of gotten out of fallout new vegas well hell's the wrong word but you know that's a that's a time-consuming game dropping 70 oh. hours on a game in the course of three weeks uh that's a lot mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> but uh yeah uh definitely pay attention to that streaming stuff it's uh it's a lot of fun and we enjoy it when you watch cool uh what were you gonna say ben I called it limbo instead of hell. Ah, there we go. Cool. Um, yeah. So I've been Cole Ross at Cole Ross on Twitter. I've been Dennis Furia at D Furia on Twitter and Green Laser seventy three on Twitch. Mm. 
I've been David Mysmith at Mysmith777 on Twitter. I've been Ben Merkel at Merkelizer on Twitter. Yeah, and uh, stick around for some titles. Uh, so yeah, what uh, what titles do we have here? One second. <laughs> I forgot to write down this time. Dang it. There, there were a lot of them, too. Uh, like, yeah. so, so many I forgot to like write down all of them. I've got Rock Genocide and Kenny Loggins. Those are the two obvious ones. Um, I also wrote down Uncharted Fungal Edition. It just struck my fancy for some reason. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, ben, how about you? All right. So the one that struck my fancy that might not land is I got Pretty But Directionless was one. <laughs> I got technical virginity oh, no. I, got, <laughs> I got creepy watson <laughs> i got heroin with the w-i-n and i got it... baby huh sorry go on and i got baby bait <laughs> <laughs> as a side note do you guys like uh cool man have you seen the like the the things with watson in these games the, the 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 videos of Watson appearing right behind you when you look away. Yeah, because like he's programmed to like you know as your assistant like always be there because like he's kind of their their tip function. Yeah. But like he's he's overtly just programmed to always be right behind you. Yeah, he, he'll, he'll just close the distance. You'll like outrun him and then he'll uh yeah. <laughs> I, I know. And like I know well, and Watson. you you can even do things like you can even like do things where it physically wouldn't be possible for him to get somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> build a brick and mortar wall yeah <laughs> cask of amontillado him yep yeah <laughs> um, did you ever sorry that was kind of a, yeah <laughs> no no it's it's good like if i didn't know about it i would want to know about it yeah. um ben did you have anything else that's all i had i really like baby vape um, I like Baby Vape too. In a better context, I would have loved heroin, but I just don't think it landed. Yeah, it's like it's it's one of those ones that like it half works in sound and it half works in visual. Wait, Wait who is this? Heroin with the W I N. Yeah, talk, talk, talking about oh. like being addicted to guides once you once you once you pop the seal. Okay. <laughs> uh, the two that I had are Kenny Loggins and uh, the Shrek is strong. <laughs> I don't like. I'm I'm kind of fond of uh, baby vape. I like I like baby vape. Yeah, yeah. go for it. Any <laughs> we should we should accompany it with a Surgeon General's warning. But <laughs> yeah. it, so is there any opposition to baby vape? <laughs> Only for mad. The motion is passed. 